Tick-tock, time to rock. You said it right. You said it right, Nick Parker. Nick Parker said, Tick-tock, time to rock. Is that, hold up. Is that Nick Parker? Or is that Mick Foley? You guys even know who Mick Foley is? Nah, son. You never watched no wrestling? You didn't, you didn't know uh, nah. Mankind, Cactus Jack, Dude Love? Oh, that's like super, super old school. That's like superstar Billy Graham days. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, it's not that old. He was he was the rocks he was the rocks uh, tag team partner. They had the rock and sock connection. He had the sock that he would keep down his pants, and then when he was uh, his special move was uh, pulling that sock out from his out from his junk, and then putting it on his hand, and then shoving it down people's uh, down people's face and uh, in people's gross. mouth. Yeah, it was pretty nasty. It was almost as nasty as uh, Rikishi, whose special move was uh, uh, smearing his uh, butt crack in people's faces because he wore like this thong. Anyway, that's totally off topic, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. That's totally off topic. But uh, Nick Parker, you look like uh, you look like Mick Foley, unless you stole Mick, Mick Foley's picture. Um, all right, how's everyone doing? Oh yeah. It's my birthday. Yeah, I see everyone saying happy birthday, David. Yeah. It's your 44 birthday. big ones. Uh, 44? 40, Don't lie. 44, you gotta lie man. about your age. You I f- gotta lie. And you know what's cool? 44, that's like that's like Dirty Harry's gun. So I feel like I have to be especially powerful this year. You know what I mean? Oh, oh. 44. You know, um, but really, you're 64, so stop lying. <laughs> hey, you, you now, John. You're you're a you're a young buck. Do you even know what we're talking about when we're talking about like Dirty Harry and stuff? Nah, son. You know, that's old man talk. <laughs> you don't know <laughs> about that. He doesn't, okay, you, you, but you know, go ahead, punk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My day. You heard that? You know that? I've heard that, but I don't know who started. Okay, it. I, I'll, Dirty I'll go, Harry. I'll go ahead and break it down just because it's my birthday. Um, <laughs> so this is a movie called Dirty Hair, and the idea is he's he's a he's like a great detective, but he's like a total dirtbag, right? He's just the guy's just a dirtbag, right? Uh, and right. he'll do all sorts of horrible stuff. Well, uh, he's in a he's in a coffee shop getting some coffee, and uh, then he sees some guys jump out of a car and run into a bank, and he knows it's a robbery, and he tells the guy, and he, he tells the guy behind the counter, he says, uh, "Go and call the police." And the guy says, "What should I tell him?" He goes, "Tell them there's a shooting in progress." Anyway, these guys come running off the bank. Dirty Harry starts starts gunning him down with his 44 Magnum, right? Boom, 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 right? He's shooting. And then one guy lands on the ground, and Dirty Harry comes over with his 44 Magnum pointed at the dude. And then he goes, I know what you're thinking, punk. Did he fire six shots or just five, right? Because he has a revolver. And right, the, you right, can see the yeah. guy's thinking, right? Did he fire six shots, in which case I can, right. I can grab my shotgun and blow him away? Or did he fire five? In which case, right. if I reach for my shotgun, he's going to blow my head off. And so Dirty Harry gives right. his fame, his famous line, I know what you're thinking, punk. Did he fire six shots or just five? Well, to tell you the truth, I kind of lost count in all the excitement. But seeing as how this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, it can blow your head clean off, you ought to be asking yourself just one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do <laughs> you, punk? And then uh, the guy totally punks out. The guy totally punks out. He, he backs down, and then he goes, I gots to know! And Dirty Harry walks right over to him, puts a gun to his head, and goes, click. So he, Dirt, <laughs> Dirty Harry knew he was out of bullets, and uh, he just went through that line to keep the guy from uh, t- from reaching for the gun. Anyway, that's where that famous line comes from. Gosh, yeah. Dirty Harry sounds like a an OG. You, you, know, you know what's funny? I, I I watched that when I was a kid, and I still remember I still remember that. I still remember that whole uh, that whole, that whole scene right there, because it was uh, pretty dope. Yeah. Um, Anyway. He's kind of an awful person, though. Really, he's, he's yeah, a movie. That's why we'd like him as a kid. Sort of See what happens. An, Not let my kids watch Dirty Harry. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he's a he's a perfect he's a perfect uh, antihero. Um, it, as a matter of fact, there's a scene where a guy's a guy's gonna uh, a guy's about to uh, uh, commit suicide because you don't know why they call him Dirty Harry, except he's like calling people names and he's a total racist and things like that. And anyway, there's a there's a guy who's about to jump off a building and he has the the lift lift him up there. And uh, the guy's like, I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump. And he's like, I don't, I don't care if you jump. I just want your name so I can notify people because you're going to be hard to identify after you hit the ground. And there's going to be parts of you laying all over the place. Anyway, he starts messing with the dude until the dude like gets enraged at him. As soon as he leans, for- leans forward, Dirty Harry punches him in his face and knocks him out and then just holds him on the edge as he as he lowers it back down. Then he walks to his partner and he goes, now you know why they call me Dirty Harry. Because was, the guy was wondering why they called him Dirty Harry. So, <laughs> yeah. Gangster. Yeah, he's pretty. Uh, he's pretty gangster. All right. Well, uh, let's just say hi to everyone. Steven says hello. Um, 
Hello. Zeke What's says. Up, Zeke says, "Woo shoo flu." We are. We are. Uh, we are. Uh, mm. We are the the flu tank clan. Flu tank clan ain't nothing to cough on. <laughs> Guys, man, <remember laughs> flu tank clan ain't Isn't nothing it? to cough on. Ain't flu nothing tank to cough clan. with. Well, yeah, if you were trying to stick with it, but it, we you, we're nothing to cough on, man. I mean, yeah, but it's like if we have it, we don't want to cough on anyone else too. Or we don't we don't want to cough on anyone else anyway too ourselves. Yeah, but we don't want you coughing on us. I think it works either way. Right. <laughs> Flu tank clan ain't nothing to cough with. Flu tank clan ain't nothing to cough with. Flu tank clan ain't nothing to cough with. Cough with. There's no place to yeah. hide as I step aside the room. Doctor Doom, prepare for the boom. Bam. Ah, oh, man. Ah, oh, jam, slam, scream like Tarzan. I haven't heard that song since I was a kid either. <laughs> no, teenager. Yo, teenager. Cat, you got the mixer? Spider -Man. Uh, <laughs> oh, you got the mixer. Oh, snap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you haven't seen, you don't know that he had that yet? He's been uh, totally embarrassing himself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John McRae's getting out of sync again. We'll see if it yep. goes in and out. Because you ain't got no rhythm. Anyone who wants to, uh, <laughs> anyone who wants to get John, well, we hear your voice, and that's what's most important. But anyone who wants to help John McRae get better equipment, you can go to his channel and subscribe on, uh, become a patron, uh, and that way he can quit using crap equipment. <laughs> Try, man. Actually, actually, you just Obviously. need you just need some tricked out internet. Unfortunately, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, I, I, I've noticed a lot. Uh, you know, really awesome internet isn't always uh, available in everyone's area. Like, uh, I mean, for the upload, because when people are getting internet packages, they just want awesome download speed because they want to watch Netflix and stuff, and they don't care about the yep. upload. But for people who are going live, upload is what matters. And like, you can have the most tricked out packages, and sometimes it'll just be like ten. You know, 10 megabits per second upload speed. Whereas I got like, I got the gigabit package, but it's still like, you know, 600 or something. It ends up being not an actual gigabit, but it ends up being like 600 megabits. And so it's flying unless there's something going wrong. Uh, oh, by the way, side note, we've had power outages here today. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's raining outside or what, but I've noticed the power uh, power going out. So if that if, if everything just goes dark, um, yeah, well, we'll we'll get back on and get back on in a second. Um, so Jabari says, happy birthday, David. God bless you with many more. Um, <laughs> the name always cracks me up. Every I've seen it like 20 times and it still cracks me up. It's it's Apu Bakker Al Puff Daddy. <laughs> he says, what's your view of Friedrich Nietzsche? I think Nietzsche is one of the few uh, atheists who has actually understood the, impl the moral implications of atheism. Um, and he understood it and he even kind of... Uh, he even kind of made fun of the British philosophers because they didn't get it. They didn't. You know, Nietzsche thought of the whole moral framework of the West as influenced by Christianity, and it's like it's kind of slave morality. Um, and he said people can't just they can't they can't get out of can't get that out of their thinking. And, and he understood the implications of rejecting God and rejecting Christianity. Apart from that, I think he's one of the most overrated philosophers in history. Apart apart from that issue, I think a uh, pretty yeah weird weird dude. Yo. What's up? You What's guys up? have released that Nietzsche script, right? What? In the Boomer Room? Yeah, you, you Nietzsche. You mean Boomer Sigmund? Room, huh? You mean Sigmund Freud? Oh, that's right. It was, yeah. yeah, that's right. Was, did you guys release that one? No, I still got it. Oh. No, because David Wood is too busy during the quarantine to actually do any editing. Apparently, it wasn't <laughs> that. I just didn't like my performance in that. Uh, um, I told I. I but but it's I, all about him. Wait, we you're should. not in that one. No, 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 no. The, the, the other one. The, he wasn't asking about. He wasn't asking about Epstein. He was asking about. No, no, no. About... I mean, I didn't like my performance in Epstein, but Epstein is a necessary transition to the Nietzsche one. So we can't. Uh, we, I mean, the the, uh, the uh, Sigmund Freud one. So we can't do Sigmund Freud without the the Epstein. But in case everyone, in case everyone's, wondering, do you, does everyone know why the the Boom Boom Room has been? D hey, hang on one second. Little, little sidetrack here. Uh, Scott Lane's calling in. Let's see if this. By the way, I've never, I don't think I've ever had four people. Hey, what the heck? I just got hey. you on. I got you on and it got rid of them. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need them anyway. Um, Yeah, we got to figure this out real quick. Did y'all start already? Huh? Yeah, no, we, st we started and when you called and I clicked on accept the call, um, it's uh, all you got off. All you okay. went away. I mean, the other two, uh, Vocab and John, went away. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to hang up on you and call you guys back. So, all right, guys. This is. Uh, keep in mind, I do not know what I'm doing here. So, I'm gonna have to hang up on you and then figure this out. All right. Cool. Good. Yep. 
Let me see if this works. All right. I believe I have to make a group. Is that correct? Do you guys know how to use this stuff? Because uh, um, I kind of do. All right. I believe I have to do new um let me see i'm going to add a person to the flu tang and that will be scott lane i'm going to add sorry about the delay everyone this is the first time i tried add i think this is the first time i've had three people on with me and all uh, right in theory, this will work. So I added to group. Now, I'm going to click resume call and see if it works for all of them. Okay, yeah, now you're back. Now you're back. Okay, are you all on there? Yeah. Vocab hey, vocab just... disappeared. All right, but do I have... We don't have Adam, though. Yeah, where's Adam? You just have to... Adam's to the call. <laughs> Adam? Adam to the call. Adam, Adam to the call. Hey, Let me Adam. See. I can try to do it. Hmm? I can try to get Adam. Um, Let me see if I can out. Scott Lane, here we go. Hit add. Hold on, yeah, I'll call I put, him right I now. Put, I put his name in there. Oh, it says see, Scott Lane it. join. It says Scott Lane yeah, join. Because I did it, son. That's okay, right. now let's see if I can have four people in here at once. That would be pretty uh that would be pretty cool. I actually need to break out my controller here and you're on ecamm right david uh now we you lost john little, you uh, see the little thing that says um all right look at that beautiful yeah look at that yo, yo what's up good yeah. yeah we added them we're all on adam, here we added them we, add, we added adam added them <laughs> we added adam <laughs> yo adam yep. is it uh i like your uh, i like your hat son appreciate it man it's not my birthday though. It's Dave's birthday. No, it ain't. <laughs> no, you, you know, I found out. Uh, Adam, I found out Adam's son has the has the the same birthday as me, so that's uh that's cool. That's why you got a hat. Yeah, that's I was wondering how you got a hat. Keeping the fun rolling, man. <laughs> I get my hat game up, son. Yo. Hey, I was answering. What? Okay, oh. Gonna burn him David, oh, do you think you could blow out a blow out your birthday candle? Uh. You get coronavirus all over the, there's a, there's, <laughs> all over the internet. There's a there's a funny there's a funny video going around of a dude. He's sitting in front of a little birthday cake, and he's but he's got a mask on. So he he pulls out a hair dryer to blow it out, and then you hear cheers. But he turns the he turns the camera around, and all his family is on a uh, uh, computer screens. <laughs> so that's how that's how birthday parties are. That's how well, birthday are you gonna blow parties this are thing now. out or not. <gasps> Hey, right on, man. All right, we are good now. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Oh, it didn't blow out entirely. Must be up oh, your snap. candle. You have to try <laughs> one more time. Struggling there, buddy. Try one more time. What the heck, man? Should we do this? Why don't we do this on air? We, we are on air. air. What are you talking about? Right. You're live, man. You're live. <laughs> this is what vocab does when we're live, right? You got. We got millions of people watching, watching for YouTube apologetics, and vocab has me repeatedly blowing out a candle. All right, here we go, vocab, to That's make it. you happy. Ready? <gasps> yeah. Oh no, vocab. Oh no. Oh my. Why? Don't put it out with paper, fool. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. This is this is this is reminding me of the time that vocab tried to shove this giant uh, Death Star ice cube in a jar and it exploded and cut him. On, I was just hoping. I just hope. I just hoping he was gonna like catch his hair on fire or something like that right there. <laughs> I, I, I. These are relight candles. I kind of forgot about that. Oh, don't worry. I'll take care of it though. I'll take Yo, care Cav, of it. do some spit. No, I know how to do it. It's just, but hey, happy birthday. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, everyone's wishing me happy birthday. All right, we'll uh, post some uh, happy birthdays real quick. Fred Sanford says happy birthday, David. Benjamin Stoll says uh, David looks so young for 59. Thank you. Uh, uh, happy birthday, matey. Oh, so I was saying, I was telling, I was telling people uh, before uh, before Adam rudely interrupted um, why the boom boom room was delayed. We did Jeffrey. Epstein back in January. So this was like shortly after the the Christmas episode where Muhammad meets Santa Claus and converts to Christianity. Uh, 
and then we recorded Jeffrey Epstein, but I had no idea what he sounds like. And then the wig was totally different from what he looks like. And so we recorded that. And all I remember was this is like the worst performance ever. So, and then it took like forever. There were all these interruptions. And so the, 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 in, the clips was like an hour for me and like an hour for vocab. And so it was like two hours worth of footage for me to go and watch the crappiest performance of my life. So it just never got made, but we kind of, we have multiple other episodes that we've already recorded. Um, just haven't made it, but I gave it to an independent dude. We gave it to our friend, Mike, the dentist, who's also an Con editor. man, Mike. I gave, I gave the footage to Mike and I said, look, you be the judge. See if it's okay. See if it's usable. If not, tell me I'll re-record all my scenes, um, with a clearer accent and I'll, 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 I'll do my hair better and stuff like that. Uh, so he's, uh, he's checking that out. Anyway, we'll, we'll be on track with the, uh, with the boom, boom room, um, again here pretty soon. Um, Louise says, happy birthday, Christopher, happy birthday, Ayo, happy birthday, um, Alex, happy birthday, happy birthday to me. Hey, you know, there's a prison. You guys want a quick prison story? <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell us about your birthday no, the, gifts you got in prison. No, this was, uh, no, 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 this was because, this was because we, we were, we were, because we were, we were doing Wu-Tang. We were doing Wu-Tang a few minutes ago. Um, that song, that, uh. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to mess with. Um, so we were doing uh, right now. We were doing Flu Tang Clan ain't nothing to cough with. But uh, in I worked in the stock room at Stanton Correctional Center, and that's a job everyone wanted because you were locked in there with all the food. Everyone else wanted the job because they wanted to sell stuff to other people, right? Like if you want your jar of peanut butter refilled, uh, you could go buy a jar of peanut butter on the canteen for four dollars, or you could give a dude like uh, you know two dollars who works in the stock room and he'd fill it up for you. So other people just wanted it to make a to uh, get a bunch of uh, money. Um, I wanted it because you're locked in a big room with all the food and you can sit back there doing push-ups and eating all day. Anyway, the, the, the truck would, have, the, the truck would eventually would come in like twice a week with loaded up with all the food that we we're going to eat through the week. So this is like, I don't know, 700 inmates or something like this. So you have these big trucks coming in. You have to unload all these, uh, uh, all these, uh, uh, boxes of food and stuff like that. So, uh, anyway, we'd be un unloading. And because the whole the whole kitchen, everyone who worked in the kitchen would have to come out and unload. And then I work in the stock room, so I have to like you know organize and stuff. But uh, we'd be unloading, and I would just do like random random songs, but I would modify the lyrics so it's about what we're doing, what we're doing while we're you know unloading this truck. So one day we're unloading this truck, and I would like I'd be rapping some song. But I would randomly pick up a box and look at it, and then insert that into into the lyrics, and so it it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't rhyme or anything like that. I'm just inserting you no know, peanut butter, right? Uh, so I was rapping that song, and so I started off, and I start going. Uh, when I stock in the stock room, my stocking is awesome. I'm causing more family feuds than Richard Dawson. And the survey says, and I grab the box. So I grabbed the box of whatever it's going to be. You know, again, peanut butter, corn, could be anything. I said, and the survey says, and I, and I go, peaches. And it was, it was a box of peaches. And I don't know why, but I lost it because it actually rhymed at, at just at random. Survey says and peaches rhymes. And uh, it was a close rhyme. Anyway, anyway, I just lost it. Uh, I was pretty useless after that because I kept thinking about how hilarious it was that a random box uh, fit in to my messed up Wu-Tang song. Man, Fire! white people problems. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that was my, that was my, uh, uh Hey Adam, you iPhone G from like a couple minutes ago. Life? No, not at all, bro. <laughs> See? I can't relate. I can't like relate. Because <laughs> because you guys are little goody two shoes. You ain't been locked up, right? You guys <laughs> are little goody two shoes. Little goody two shoes. No, little I'm goody two about, shoes. I can't relate to you not being able to rhyme. That, that's I, not. I did rhyme. Survey says. Survey says peaches. <laughs> yeah, but he can you rhymed it with what? What did you rhyme it with? Hey look, <laughs> hey, hey look at this. Survey says peaches. Hey, it stands white like bleaches. <laughs> hey, Templar Bear says, uh, David, uh, you have to watch the big show on Netflix. Now that is the weird. That is so weird because one, I did not know that the big show was a show until literally ten minutes before we started this live stream. Uh, my son Paley, who um, he's, uh, he, he's 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 disabled, so he's sitting. He sits in his. Uh, you know, he's in bed, and uh, so anyway, I turned on a show for him. And I just randomly clicked on uh, Netflix and the big show popped up. And I go, okay, well, he can watch the big show. And I clicked on it. So that's the first, the 
the only two times I've heard of the show, the big show, have all been uh, in the past 40 minutes. One right before we started and right now. So anyway, I might have to check it out now. It might be a sign, ladies and gentlemen, a sign. Um, and Fred Sanford here says, topic for today, how to do YouTube apologetics. Live with vocab, John, Adam, and David. So guys, uh, it's interesting. Quick, you should give a shout out to your super chat so first, bro. You got Madeline G. Oh yeah, yeah. Mystic Lee, I'm gonna, Agnostic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to him. I realize I've been running my mouth for 20, 20 minutes, uh, so <laughs> twenty some minutes, and then we haven't even got to the introductions and stuff. So each one of you, each one of you, uh, independently, go ahead, introduce yourself, uh, say what you do on YouTube, and give people some tip because I wanted to point this out. Um, the pat, you know, I do sometimes. I go live here, but sometimes I do like, uh, I go live with a particular group. Like last night, I went live with uh, a Ratio Christie group and stuff like that. And anyway, when I go live with with uh, individual groups, right? So that's not that's not live on YouTube. That's like on Zoom with a private group. Um, but uh, a lot of the questions are, you know, hey David, I just started a YouTube channel. Uh, what tips do you have? Uh, you know, how do I get? You know, how do I get subscribers when I don't have any yet? How do I go through this and stuff? And so, guys, there's a there's a big interest out there. So. You guys have been doing it for a while. I guess Adam is the youngest, but although you've been doing YouTube for a long time, but but uh, you've been stepping up your game more recently. But uh, John's been going hard for a couple of years. Vocab's been going hard with live streams for the past couple of years. I've been going hard for like 10 years straight. Um, uh, but yeah, go ahead and uh, explain what you guys do here. And then, uh, you know, give your thoughts or any tips you might have for YouTube, something you might have learned the hard way. And then we'll talk to the Super Chats, and it, we'll basically get to where we're just taking questions from the chat. It's my birthday. We're laid back, right? We're not going to be we're not gonna be sticklers for, uh, for too much, but all right. Uh, who wants to start? Vocab, you're on the top left corner. I am in the top left corner. Mm -hmm. uh, Aiden had an actual, like, question for that was relevant. Oh, yeah? You remember good old, good old Aiden? Aiden. I Aiden. thought we could. Uh, Aiden oh, goes hard. in the hot zone right now, too. Yeah, he's up in New York. Oh yeah, Aiden. How's it looking uh, with uh, coronavirus up there in Harlem? Yeah. All right, go ahead, Cap. Well, uh, I, was just, I was trying to go back and find uh, his actual question. Where did Aiden? Where did it go? Aiden, just post it again, bro. What? Why is yeah, it? Bro, I've got a tip. Hey, oh, you got it? Oh, hear okay, go me. ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, I, let, this whole time, I've been trying to play it off like he was straight face, but like I, I'm trying to be live with you guys, and I've got like one of my videos playing in my computer i can't figure out what program it's playing on so i have myself <laughs> muted for like the last five minutes and we're trying to keep a straight face <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out exactly where this thing is coming from and i was like i'm gonna play it off but i figured like maybe i'm sitting here looking constipated so i was like well maybe i should just say something uh, but I, I can't figure out where it's coming from Pro probably probably uh that usually happens for me on uh uh gosh what's that apple what's that apple itunes if, yeah, if iTunes, you have itunes too. on there Get rid of. Uh, if you plugged in your headphones, yeah, it might have just activated it. Close out, close out iTunes, and then if that doesn't work, then close, close your browsers, close down uh, Google Chrome or um, Safari, whatever one, because you don't need those on Skype. Um, so just don't, just, don't just close out, Chrome. don't close out Skype. I just, I just, I just closed out uh iTunes and Chrome is still going. I have no idea where this thing is playing from. <laughs> this is oh well, man, you're just gonna have to stick it out. Uh, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I'm gonna like mute myself and tell the video. So. No, we can, we can't hear it though, so that's okay. Oh y'all, yeah, can yeah, hear it? yeah, but no. he need, he needs to hear us though, John. Eh. Oh, I, can, I can barely hear y'all. I'm, okay. I've been sitting here trying to like laugh at jokes and like keep a straight face while I'm like scrambling behind the scenes trying to. <laughs> yeah, you got your cloth. You sweating and stuff, man. I was worried yeah, about yeah, no. you. <laughs> so I don't know. All right. So if y'all can't hear it, then that's, that, I'm good. Then. I'm no, good. we're good. All right. All right. Let's go, Cap. Aiden want to know what's the most important thing to do. I think when you start an apologetics YouTube channel, I can't find his comment again, but I'm pretty sure that's what he asked because I had okay. said it earlier. And uh, uh, shout out to Carmel Crunk. You're getting a lot of birthday love, bro. So shout out. Oh to yeah, that's her birthday uh, too. Stuff. Yeah. So that's that's uh so that's uh that's Adam's Happy son. Birthday. That's Adam's son and Carmel Crunk and uh me and statistically i mean we're at 400 right we're at 400 a little over 400 right now but uh statistically yeah there should be there should be uh one or two or possibly more uh on here who uh have the same birthday oh is so that like a cool. common birthday or something like that or no it's just there are only 365 possibilities 
Oh, okay. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. good point. I was, well, I was gonna like, th- follow joke was gonna be there's nothing no. special about your no. birthday then, but I mean, no. it's, you know. Yeah, it's three, kind of that. three hundred. I guess three hundred sixty-six possibilities for kids who are born on leap year. Leap year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we also got um, uh, MJ, MJ Jackson in the house. Sent another super chat. MJ. Subscribe. Subscribe All right, MJ. so uh, so we got to answer. Uh, we got to answer Aiden's question. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, uh, I'll say something I don't think everyone else is going to say but i feel like i want to say two things but uh i think one important big thing is to uh to be okay with only pleasing some of the people some of the time and so you know you start putting yourself out there in public and the internet and i think it's good to recognize the stuff i'm going to do on youtube is not for everybody and that's because not everyone's even interested in these topics, although we want to find ways to try to get them interested. But number two, even out of those who are interested in these topics, apologetics, theology, all that kind of stuff, not everyone's going to like your particular emphasis or style and all that kind of stuff. And basically, uh, if you try to play it safe, no one's really going to be interested in watching you because then you're not actually going to be interesting. So be yourself and go at it and be OK with that. And you can change and grow as you go along. But I think that's important. And then number two is, um, <clears throat> you know, try to build a tribe. And what I mean by that is basically is to uh, try to think of things and encourage things that aren't just about you on the on what you're doing. Try to think of things that um, help grow a community. And so I think that there's different things that work for different people. Some people – uh, part of the ways they build community are they actually include the the viewers in a lot of their personal life, even though they're just doing apologetics. Uh, that's one thing, actually, to a certain extent, David does. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're easy there with Manny and this and that. Now, I don't think that works for everybody, and there's different levels of how you can do that. That's That's an idea because then it's like you're connecting in various ways. So there's various ways to do this, and uh, we could talk more about that. But to me, those are two things like – Basically, you know, be okay being yourself because you realize, you know, it's all right and go hard at doing that. And, and then it kind of related to that is build your tribe, meaning then there will be certain people who are attracted to the certain kind of things you're doing. And then within that, you don't just want to sort of attract it to, you know, you're, you want to also then build community of those other people. So those are two things I would say, which uh, may not be the first things you think about when you think about an apologetics channel. That's why I mentioned those two. Mm-hmm. So there's there's me. Well, David asked for one, not two. So thanks for being disrespectful of his time on his birthday. <laughs> you guys, uh, okay, man. <laughs> yo, uh, yo, John, you have anything you want to add to that? Someone getting started on YouTube? Because, th- by the way, that is prob- one of the most common questions I get. Uh, how do you get started? Because, yeah. guys, that is a huge uh, problem um, that – I've pointed this out before. If you're starting on YouTube, you can have you can make the greatest YouTube video anyone's ever seen. If you have no subscribers, no one watches it, right? No one watches it, and so, yeah. Yeah. so that's the that's the problem. Uh, and in reality, you're not going to make the best YouTube video anyone's ever seen because you're just getting started. You 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 don't know how to use a camera. You don't know how to use microphone. You don't know how to edit. Uh, you don't know what works, and so your your video is going to be garbage. Plus plus you have no subscribers and so what do you do and uh so guys what do you what's the uh what what are some tips that might help someone who's getting started on youtube well actually i'd I, I like to chime in on that it's kind of like the new kid on the block you know just uh i've been on the come up a little bit here um one thing i would say is be open to feedback uh, definitely be open to feedback you know I've, I've been you know blessed you know to have individuals like david wood vocab john to, you know, take me under their wing, you know, give me some tips and stuff like that. I mean, this time last year, I was probably looking at about maybe like 700 subscribers or whatever. You know, just as yesterday, I was looking at like 4,200 something, you know what I mean? And that partly came due to just listening to small stuff like vocab hit me up like, hey, man, you know, you need to switch up your thumbnails. Don't have your, your logo as every single thumbnail, you know, or, hey, you know, you might want to add a little comedy here or do this, there, you know, just kind of little tips and tricks as you go. But just being open to feedback, you know, don't, you know, be offended, you know, when people give you uh, constructive feedback. 
um, and, and having a squad around you that's that's able to critique yourself. That's that's a big help. But actually, probably more important than that is you know find a, a lane that you're really passionate about, you know, and don't stray from it. You know, what I mean, because the thing is, I mean, and any of the, any of these guys will attest to it. But sometimes you know editing video sucks I mean, like, you might you might spend days on end you know after you recorded this dope content and you might spend days editing this getting this animation right and all and it's not necessarily fun like not every aspect of this is going to be fun and so what you have to have is like a passion for what you do so that you know even in the times when you're pulling all night sometimes i don't go to sleep sometimes i stay up all night working on stuff you know what i mean that's that's the reality or I, it might not even be recording i might stay all all night researching something because I want to make sure that when I drop this argument that it's correct and, and nobody's going to come back and, you know, hit me up in the comments and make me look stupid. So stuff like that really matters. Like you got to really be on your grind and it helps when you're really passionate about what it is that you do, you know? And so, yeah, that, that would be, you know, my two, two, mm -hmm. uh, two things. So, so I'm also disrespecting David Wood. He asked for one, but I'm also disrespecting this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say, uh, it's weird. I, I, the thing I think is probably most important, what a lot of people probably don't think when they start, is you just got to have good content. And I try to create content that if you if something that you want to see and that other people want to see, too. Right. Like, so it is like a it's a weird kind of lane to walk because you can do like I like to talk about like theology the most. Like that's what I like the most. You know what I mean? But. I know that for my channel, my channel goals, that's not the, the thing that I want to do all the time, right? Um, but so you want to try to be smart about like who your specific target audience is and keep it as narrow as possible. Because when I started, I did like everybody else. I was like, oh, my videos are going to be for everybody. And it doesn't work that way with YouTube. The more narrow that your target audience is, the better that your channel is going to do. And so my channel, if I could start over and do it again, I would just have one type of video mainly, you know what I mean? Because I have skits and I have um, t uh, like responding to atheists and stuff. And then I have stuff like I'm talking about the gospel. Then I have like personal stories. And, and that's not optimal for YouTube, you know what I mean? Um, so this is how I started. And so I keep going this way. Um, but that's not optimal for YouTube. So keep your target audience as narrow as possible and have the specific person in mind who you'd want to create videos for. And then I think you'll do a lot better. That's why I think which channel and uh, um, AP's channel, Apostle Prophet's channel and stuff did really well too um, because their target audience is narrow. You know exactly what you're getting every time you're going to click on a video. So that's one thing I do wrong, but I would encourage other people to uh, to do it right. So, yeah, so... I, uh, I, oh, go ahead. There's a lot of things you do wrong, John. We're just trying to be nice, man. Just... <laughs> one, more, one more thing is always, always, always wear shades during your live streams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, uh, Aiden, I'll give you my thoughts. Um, have to agree with John on uh, figure out what your channel is going to be for. Why did Adam just disappear? Anyway, figure out what your channel is going to be for ahead of time. Um, figure out your target audience and keep it narrow. Uh, what, what John said about, you know, trying to appeal to everyone who doesn't work. There's a reason for that. Right. Um, lots of people will. The, the idea behind making stuff that you think is going to is going to reach everybody or, or having a channel that is going to have stuff for everybody on it is that you will always lose to the channels that are specific. Right. Specific. Right. So if you you know have content for everyone, uh, different people have interests that they focus on. Right. There's, there's there's not many people who are just interested in everything. Right. Even on my channel, there are people who are there are some people who are on there because they're interested in Islam but like Islamic apologetics, refuting Islam, um, or they might be interested in like jihad stuff. They don't care. They don't care about witnessing to Muslim or apologetics or just, you know, they want to understand jihad and stuff like that. So, so there's this division notice, even, even within that subtopic, because I do deal with other topics, but even within that subtopic notice, if people are, if people see my video, three stages of jihad. And then they watch that video and they say, wow, that's a good video. And then maybe they, maybe later they watch one on, uh, on some terrorist attack and they say, wow, this guy has a good explanation. And then, and then they, they click on that. And then later they watch a video and I'm responding to a Muslim, uh, argument against the deity of Christ. Well, if they're not interested in that, they're going to be like, eh, I don't know, this is popping up in my feed, but I'm not really interested in that. Well, guess what? If I make a couple of videos like that, then maybe, eh, I don't know, I'm, I'm unsubscribing to this dude. I thought I thought he was just going to be cool and just be wrecking, you know, wrecking uh, uh, terrorist attacks and stuff like that. But he's sitting there trying to, you know, he's a Christian, so I'm not I'm not really interested. Um, hey, who's got a, is that you? Is that you, Adam? 
I'm pretty sure that was John. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, the 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 idea is. Some people are going to watch a particular video you like. They're going to like that video, and they're going to subscribe because of that video. Whereas if you just have stuff that's kind of on all kinds of random stuff, then the next time they see your videos popping up, it's stuff they're not interested in, and then you unsubscribe. Whereas if someone subscribes to you because your channel is all about vegan baking, let's say, right? You love vegan baking, and you make a channel on vegan baking. Guess what? The only people who subscribe to you are people who are interested in, video, in vegan baking. So if all your videos are about vegan baking, you don't lose any subscribers, right? You're talking about the stuff that that group is is uh, is interested in. So, yeah, figure out, you know, what your channel's for. Um, as, as other people said, you know, uh, uh, let, 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 your, let who you are stand out because at the end of the day, what, what really lasts on YouTube is... Over time, people feel like they get to know you, which you don't always, you know, get from reading a book or from seeing a person lecture. You can watch a William Lane Craig lecture. You don't feel like you know William Lane Craig, but after, you know, years of, you know, watching somebody on, on YouTube and they're talking directly to the camera or actually interacting on live stream and in the, uh, in the comment section and so on, you, you start, you start actually knowing people. And so, um, yeah, do those things. Also go to some channels that are like, uh, you know, I think there's uh, one called Video Influencers and stuff like that, but they're the channels that are actually about, you know, how to make thumbnails, how to get started on YouTube, how to get your first thousand subscribers. Matter of fact, just type in something like that, how to get your first thousand subscribers or something. That's gonna, or how to get started on YouTube and start watching some of those videos because we had to learn a lot of stuff the hard way. Um, but other people, other people had to learn it the hard way. And then they make channels about, hey, here's some stuff you need to know. And so you don't end up screwing up a lot of time and so you don't end up wasting a bunch of your time and so good to learn that stuff now from people who've already been through there and you might want to spend three or four months you might want to spend three or four months watching videos on all of these topics because it's you know how to record a video how to edit a video how to get good sound quality uh that sort of thing then you know how to title how to title videos how to make good thumbnails um all kinds of stuff to learn for you to learn all that stuff at the beginning before before you go on there because Gosh, I could I could spend probably six months just going back to the videos I made for my first five or six years and fixing them because I did them all wrong, right? The descriptions are wrong, the th you know the the thumbnails are wrong, the titles are wrong. I could just go back fixing those things because I messed them all up and didn't find out till later. All right. Hey, can I add one more thing on top of that? Yes, you can. Or maybe actually, I want to kind of throw a question out. So. One of the, the hurdles for me, and I, and I feel like your know, vocab kind of touched on it, but like one of the hurdles for me that I think is important being a YouTuber is on the one hand, everybody wants to be liked. I mean, you want people to like your videos, share your videos and all that kind of stuff. But I, I feel like there is this underlying skill to learning how to not be liked. You know, what that's I'm saying? true. That's a part of the game. You know what I mean? And I, I learned I kind of learned. Well, yeah, I learned that from you guys. I mean, the importance of that, you know, what mm -hmm. I mean, but but. Anybody want to speak on that? Like, kind of how important that is. You are, you, you are, yeah, you are completely, you are absolutely correct, and it's something, it, it's along the same lines of trying to make content that appeals to everybody, right? Um, yeah. And so there, there's the idea of trying to be liked by everyone and and not picking a side and so on. And if you watch the guys who've been doing it a long time and are are explaining things they've learned along the way, they say things like, "Be polarizing," right? be polarizing and if you want to know i mean think about someone like like alex jones right that guy became massively massively popular and he's saying things like that that mass shooting at that school is all nonsense and then later he comes back and oh well, of course it happened uh yeah i was just playing around like right? he's like extremely extremely saying stuff that's extremely right, right, right. uh extremely offensive to to lots of people but you, we're not i'm not just talking about you know saying things like uh, you know, saying things that uh, would offend it's a bunch of people. Story. I'm just saying, right. look, yeah, yeah, yeah. here's here's my position on this, I, and here's why I here's why you people who disagree with me are wrong about this. That is much is much more likely to uh, to 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 get people to actually take you seriously and want to want to listen to you than you know trying to be you just trying to like not take a position so that you don't hurt anyone's feelings. So absolutely, that's right. so you guys, yeah. Oh my bad. I was okay. gonna say, yeah, you guys are uh, anybody that's gonna start a YouTube channel. You are gonna get tons and tons of hate, especially when you're talking about religion and stuff like that. You're just gonna have tons and tons of hate. So you gotta have some thick skin, and it does build up over time, though. You get more used to it because you're gonna get tons of hate. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too is that YouTube is not easy too. It, it might look easy to people, but it's not easy. So if you pick something that you're not passionate about, 
you're going to burn out and you're going to give up before you even get the chance to get bigger because it's it's hard work and it's there's a lot of stuff that goes into it too so um so make sure you do something that you're passionate about too and don't just do something that um you think is going to get you like big or something like that because it just won't work mm-hmm. right, right yeah right. yeah absolutely uh let me run through uh some of these super chats real quick uh so Thunder Bear already put up on the screen, said, happy birthday, Dr. Wood, praying for your ministry. Uh, Google user said, where's the rap suicidal thief murderer versus God? <laughs> I'm not familiar with what? that one. I'm not familiar <laughs> with that one. Uh, Benjamin Handelman said, David, it was so nice of you to get John here for a birthday present. Uh, yeah. So that was for that was for you. That was for you, Benjamin. We got John on here. And by the way, everyone, uh, links to John's channel, Adam's channel, and Vocab's channel are in the description box if you want to subscribe to these guys. Uh, Magdalene G said, "God bless." Um, Theistic leaning agnostic says, "Happy birthday, David." Looking at your older vids, it looks like over the past ten years you've become more lean, and the beard definitely suits you. It actually depends. I fluctuate. And I don't, I don't fluctuate. I fluctuate based on back pain, right? When, when my, if my back starts hurting enough, uh, sixty nine is a tough year, bro. I know, yeah. I get it. Yeah, no, man, you no, get there, buddy. guys. I, I know. I, I used to uh, during the summers when I was in college. I, in, my, in the summers, I worked for, uh, I worked for moving companies, right? So we go around, and uh, I'm hauling. You know, we're carrying pianos and dressers and stuff like that. And uh, everyone always tell me, man, lift with your legs, not with your back. And I would always just lean straight over and I'm going, what are you talking about? I have the strongest back in the world. Look at how I lift this piano up. And I was, I was strong. It did not occur. It always, what I was thinking at the time was my muscles can take it. I'm not injuring myself. I didn't realize that you're doing damage to your back that is not going to show up for another 10 or 15 years. Right. And that's right. what I had to learn. That's what I had to learn is, uh, Gosh, I haven't even been doing anything for five years. Why is my back killing me all of a sudden? So anyway, basically, if my back got to hurting enough, I would hit the gym, do a ton, and hey, while I'm there, I'll just go ahead and work everything and stuff like that. And then I get in pretty good shape. And then my back would feel fine for like the next six months. And I was like, cool, I don't have to work out anymore. And then so, uh, and then so you'd see, that's when I that's when I would gain weight because I'm not working out and stuff like that. So you can see actually see me fluctuate over uh, over the years. So. I think the more important question is, are you know, just just kind of wondering where your psychological state is. Are you worried at all that your AARP card will be delayed due to the coronavirus? Like, I mean, I'm sure it's in the mail. It's headed your way. Are you concerned about that? Is that something that's that is got that five years ago? He got that, that five years ago. He's, he's plus, five. and plus, I can't even plus I can't even go to uh, Denny's for their senior citizen discount now. <laughs> Because everything oh, is closed man. down. Right, right. What are you going to do if you're getting screwed, man? He's got old for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep, we already, uh, yep, we already shouted out uh, Carmel Crunk, whose birthday is also today. MJ Jackson hey, said, right. how, "said How did I miss this? What do you mean? You're on it right now, obviously for commenting. Oh, maybe, maybe didn't get the notification." Uh, Mr. Phil Fox said, "Happy birthday, David! Thanks for your ministry and faithfulness. And you know, I have to shout out to the coolest." cat on youtube my main man vocab malone vocab malone is the coolest cat on youtube and you got john oh, McC- yeah. you got john that mccray he lives in an opposite world All right <laughs> bizarro thanks bro okay i gave him a super chat to, to make that comment. <laughs> um th- this this one is act this one's actually uh, it's in super chat but it's for everyone uh yovaniel andrew said david happy birthday i'm planning to start a channel but i like christian history what do you think? What editing software uh, I need to learn now? Well, guess I think that I mean I think if you do it well, I think that's a that's an awesome channel idea, right? Uh, Christian history. You're making videos about Christian history, and um, you know could, because you can start you can start time of Jesus and stuff like that, and so there's all sorts of information there. But also people know very little about. Christian history, and you see this when when everyone will say anything they don't like about Christianity, and they'll say it happened at the Council of Nicaea when they clearly have no idea what happened at the Council of Nicaea. We know everything that happened at the Council of Nicaea, and know that didn't happen at the Council of Nicaea. You giant moron, right? So, uh, yeah, actually, going through his through Christian history would uh, would be an awesome idea for a channel. You said, what editing software do you need to learn now? Well, fortunately for most stuff, for most of my videos, I only use iMovie, right? And that is like the easiest program on the planet. Uh, If you have a Mac, then iMovie comes with your Mac, uh, whether it's a laptop or whether it's a desktop. Uh, iMovie comes with a Mac. 
and very easy to learn. You can um, you can basically go on you can basically go on to YouTube and type in you know how to use uh, iMovie and look at a recent one that's made in like you know 2019 or 2020. Watch that. You're not going to have any problems learning how to use that to edit videos. Uh, so I, I use because notice most of my videos is just me sitting in front of a bookcase talking, and then there'll be you know graphics and stuff that pop up on the screen or quotations but you could do all that in iMovie uh, but if you need now sometimes I need something more sophisticated in other words if you need multiple layers and stuff like that um, then I use I use Final Cut which is more sophisticated uh, but it but even now they've they've made them closer together right so uh, several years ago Final Cut was very 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 different from iMovie uh, learning one didn't help you learn the other, but since since app those are the ones both put out by Apple now they've they've brought them closer together over the years so that now um, it's like a stepping stone. Learn iMovie and then you know Final Cut is you know just you learn the extra features and they're set up very similar and stuff like that. So those are my thoughts on there. But guys, what do you think about uh, Christian History Channel? And uh, you guys agree on the editing software? Are you guys yeah. are you guys just Final Cut guys? You yeah. use iMovie too? What do you guys use? I'm Final Cut I'm, I'm, guy, so I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of getting into it. But that's you know, I feel like I do iMovie and it you know, does pretty well. I mean, I'm sure I could find some perks and features with the uh, you know Final Cut stuff, obviously. But uh, iMovie has done me pretty well. But I mean, with the, as far as the the concept of, of uh, Christian history, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea for the reasons that you said. I mean, you know, people don't really know history, uh, Christian history like that. And I think it, it just you know that in and of itself can help clarify things. Like a lot of times we feel like. Some of the challenges to Christianity that we're getting are like new or something like that. When really the church has refuted a lot of these arguments, like you know, a thousand or more years ago. You know, so kind of going through the history, I think would be pretty dope. I would, I would watch it. Mm -hmm. would yeah, it. and I'd say um, um, I agree. The Christian history would be dope. Is a dope idea if you do it, and like especially you'll learn too as you keep doing more videos. Start finding out what works, what doesn't, and then you keep building on that, and then eventually you get this good niche of like how what really works for you uh, but as far as like programs and stuff like that you just use anything that is intuitive to you because um, people will usually when they think they have to go buy a ton of gear and a, you know expensive programs and stuff before they start you don't you know what I mean in, in any of my video descriptions I have a link of like my first setup I had it's only a couple hundred dollars or something like that and that's everything you need to get going you know what I mean and so don't go spend a ton of money you can even use your cell phone the cell phone quality is way better than my old camera anyway now you know so just don't go spend a bunch your money just start by just getting used to your stuff and then as time comes on your your channel is going to grow and then you start bringing in a little bit more support from or at least ad revenue and stuff like that eventually and then you can upgrade gear too so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and uh as as john pointed out a while ago uh that that rule number one you got you got to have good content and that's that's kind of the motto among creators content is king content mm -hmm. is king so whatever else you're doing make sure the content is good everything else can be uh, everything else can be forgiven, but the main thing that's going to uh, bring people back to your channel is having good quality uh, content. I'll also point out for you guys who want to get started, you guys who are trying to get started here, um, uh, usually, usually the first uh, the first year or two is called your pain period. It's called the pain period because you're working you're working your butt off to make videos and then you post your video and then you know 30 people watch it right and you spent you spent a week making a video and then 30 people watch it now if if you actually know someone who has a bigger channel that can help because the easiest way to actually get over that that initial hump of not of going from not having any subscribers to having some some, some subscribers the the easiest way is if you actually know somebody who can tell other people about you, right? So and when Adam posts stuff, you know, we, we know that he's kind of getting started off with, with YouTube apologetics. And so we, we say, we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll tell people, hey, you need, you need to check this guy out. So if you, ha if you, know, people, you know other people who are YouTubers, that can help a lot. But uh, even, even with that, even with people, you know, giving you shout outs and stuff like that and helping you out, the first year or two, the first year or two is hard because it's discouraging, right? You work your butt off making a video and you just don't get, you just don't get the response that you want. But guess what? Almost everyone starts like that, right? Almost everyone goes through that, goes through that difficult period. The people who actually make it through it and keep grinding and keep putting the stuff out, those are the people who, who, who make it on YouTube. And so, uh, yeah, the, the idea is just, just be ready for that, right? Be ready to 
work hard and not see a lot of fruit. You got to keep you got to keep doing it. You got to keep doing it. But after a couple of years, then it becomes more of a self-sustaining process because I'll tell you, it is exciting to sit down, record a video, edit the video, post the video and you check next day and it's got 59,000 views, you know, after one day, right? That's that's that becomes automatic like instant gratification so you get into a loop where oh this is awesome oh it's cool oh my goodness look at all the people who are watching this in pakistan uh, or, or in india look how many people on the opposite side of the world are watching this and that makes you want to go back so at first it's gosh i'm putting so much work into this and getting so little out of it uh but later it's uh wow i'm putting all this work into it but look at the impact it's having so keep that in mind all right anyone else want to uh uh, comment on that? Uh, just, I just real want to quick. point out, everyone okay. notice how David Wood is all about instant gratification. Yeah, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yo, um, too, um, you guys don't think, too, that like you can just reach out to a big YouTuber and then they can tell everybody to sub to your channel and it's going to make you blow up? doesn't work that way. Subs so no. don't transfer like that, too. You have to have good content and a lot of it, too. You can't just have one video because people have to watch your video then watch another one of your videos then another one of your videos then usually people subscribe after they've watched a few of your videos that they mm -hmm. like you know then they'll start but um like if i i've subscribed to channels that i'd never see from again because they don't have enough content you know when they when i subscribe mm -hmm. so get your get your library built up as well too so. yeah and mm -hmm. uh, uh, along those lines notice uh i get requests all the time david can you tell people to subscribe to my channel um, if I haven't, if I haven't, if you haven't been doing this for a while and I don't know you, chances are I'm not going to, right? Because okay. notice if you, if you make one video and then I say, every, Hey, everyone go subscribe to that channel. And then your next video is total garbage. And then, uh, and then you just give up notice. That means that my recommendations mean less and less and less. And it, it's going to get, it'll get to the point where it doesn't even help me to say it because no one is, no one's going to trust me. So, um, yet yeah, normally, normally, uh, to, to, Normally, for people to sit here, for other people to sort of vouch for you and say, "Hey, you need to check. You need to check this guy out." Uh, either they need to know you, right, and they need to they need to know. Okay, I know this. I know this guy is going to be making better and better content. So I, I trust him, and I can I can uh, I can uh, tell send people his way, uh, or people just have to see. Okay, you know this guy's been making videos for the past two years, and he's making good videos and I've watched. So this is, this is like with Islam critique, right? I was looking Islam critique made videos for an entire year and he was making really, really good content. He was just stuck without, you know, he couldn't, didn't have a lot of subscribers and it's just hard getting started without a lot of subscribers. But uh, you could see that he's consistent. He's consistently making good content. And then, so yeah, so we, we started, we started pointing people towards his channel and stuff like that. Now he's got like, I think he's got like over 18,000 or something like that. Uh, so, good. Yep, that's how it works. Hey, you know what? I want to throw something in there too. Just, mm -hmm. just as somebody who's kind of on the other side of the fence, like you know, a guy who you know, I feel like I've said it like five times, but I'm, I'm trying to get my thing up and going here. And one approach that I've taken is, I, if I do reach out to somebody or if I connect with somebody, I, I try not to make it just about like subs or something like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, I really want to connect with them because I mean, at the end of the day, we're you know, this is you know, we're Christians. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I don't want to be exploiting people. You know, for, for subs and notoriety or whatever. You that's, know? A, so that's a vo really... that's a vocab does. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's vocab all day. I was forced that, so. into YouTube. That's the opposite of the truth. I was pulled, kicking and, and screaming. I was totally dragged here by David Wood, like a caveman <laughs> with a with a with a woman where you know, like I was. That's what happened with me. Even though I don't really. This analogy is going to real dark place, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna well, okay, I'll let you have it. Go ahead, and talk about how you're trying to get your thing up. <laughs> but uh, but so no, nah, I mean, so uh, at the end of the day, it's just like be be authentic. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Be authentic. You know what I mean? You, you don't want to be just like, yo, man, can I get like 500 subs? You know, it's like or, or or whatever. You know, like me and John, I guess maybe our situation is a little bit different. We connected kind of more organically because we were just you know, out here doing apologetics. Yeah. We were in some of the same forums. You know what I'm saying that you know he reached out to me or I reached out to him, however it went. And we just kind of progressed from there. That was before he had his channel. And same thing with Vocab. You know what I mean? I was doing my True ID podcast, you know, reached out to him, interviewed him. And so that kind of developed organically. And ago. these guys, what's that? That was years ago. That was before I even had, even thought about starting a channel. Way before we were, we already had similar interests and we were talking all the time. So, yeah, we were debating, doing debates and stuff together. So, yeah, yeah. that was years ago. Yeah. That was a while ago, man. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And so that developed organically. And then you two guys, lo and behold, 
somehow, you know, meet up with David Wood and then y'all referred me to him. So like all that kind of happened organically. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't like I was like, th- you know, like, like sub chasing, so to speak or whatever. Yeah. Nah, you you're, know, you're, you're, you're plotting, know. you're plotting. You saw it. You said, Hey, <laughs> le- Hey, le- let me, uh, let me, let me become buddies with John. Cause he knows David Wood. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I'll steal all David's subs and, uh, and then I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm going to start the real apologetics empire <laughs> hey, hang, hang on check, check this out check this out comment from uh zanelli zanelli here uh david wood i was believing muslim i have seen all your videos i wish i had never seen your videos because of you when i read the quran there is something inside me that says the quran does not come from allah wow well wow. Really? Huh. yeah well Crazy. uh yeah cool. uh Zanelli, that that thing inside you that is telling you that the Quran does not come from God, uh, that's your brain. <laughs> and what happened is, uh, I I understand. So just to be clear, I'm not saying that Muslims don't use their brains. I'm saying, uh, if all you hear all your life is the Quran is this masterpiece and Muhammad's the greatest man who ever lived and the Quran's filled with all these scientific insights and blah 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 blah, then it makes sense to your brain to think, oh, this must be from God. But when your brain is then filled with facts that completely contradict everything you've been told, then your brain starts telling you, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. This isn't from God. This, there's a problem here. Houston, we have a problem. So yeah, it can also, I mean, for I'm, I'm sure people are going to jump in and say, no, it could be, you know, uh, something spiritual Holy or something spirit. like that. But uh Simplest explanation here is once you learn enough about uh, the Muslim sources and once you learn that the arguments that are used to prop up Islam are a bunch of nonsense, then, yeah, something inside you starts saying, come on, this is this is not true. And so, Zanelli, uh, I encourage you, uh, keep studying, uh, keep watching videos, learn more and more and more and more and more. Definitely, definitely need to reject Islam and pay attention to some of the videos on Jesus and his resurrection. All right, guys. Uh, oh wait, couple, nope. couple more, a uh, couple more super chats here. Christine S says, "Happy birthday, David, and hello to my favorite YouTube crew." I guess that means you guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for all the good work that you do and generously share with us. Um, uh, Yvonne L. Andrew, again. Oh, uh, also says, uh, "David and friends, maybe you can open a mentor slash class <laughs> to teach about." Uh, open YouTube topic, uh, Christianity. I'm in Indonesia. Uh, it's quite sensitive. Um, yeah. So yeah, I understand things can be rough in, in Indonesia, but yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be doing all sorts of, uh, all sorts of stuff here on YouTube. Me and John, me and John are actually planning on making some, uh, doing some creator stuff, basically running, doing something more formal on running people, how to get running through people, how to get uh, running people through the topic of how to, how to get started on YouTube. We, 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 Running people, what the other thing? I was going to be taking a spear. I was going to beat the drop, man. I was yeah. Like, yeah, so, uh, so. I was taking we, a spear to his listeners. Yeah, so, right. what, what, I mean, I, I'd like to, you know, just run through all the basics. Here's, here's you know, as far as cameras. Okay, here's how to use your cell phone if you need to, to, to make videos. Here's how to use a, a camcorder. Here's how to use, you know, this. Uh, here's how a mic works and stuff like that. Run it, run everyone through that for people who want to get started. Um, you guys see any, uh, I've still got more super chats here, but I don't want to, I just want to, I don't want to keep talking when all oh, you guys are here. You guys see, if you guys see comments you want to address along the way, uh, feel free to yeah, jump in one, anytime. Actually, yeah. Uh, I saw a question from, um, I thought it was kind of interesting. Let me bring it up. I cut and pasted it right quick. Uh, I think it's from black Tuesday films. Uh, it says, um, what's a more effective way of studying apologetics slash philosophy for YouTube videos? I thought that was kind of interesting. Those, that's yeah. like saying, how do you mix oil with water? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right. I'm, yeah, I'm I thought that was kind of interesting. I want to see you kind of throw it out to you guys, see what y'all thought about that. Yeah. So it's about studying, how, you know, studying apologetics and philosophy for YouTube? Yeah, it seems like, he's, it seems like he wants to, to, yeah, more effective way of studying apologetics, or excuse me, most effective way of studying apologetics slash philosophy for he says YT videos, but I'm assuming he's, he means YouTube. Yeah, you know, YouTube yeah. videos. Yeah, he's probably saying, "How do you integrate philosophy into YouTube content?" That's what I understand him to be saying. Right, right, right. No problem that. Or, or I mean, I understand him to be saying, like, uh, if you're if you're studying, a, 
like the way the way the way the way I would take that is, uh, you know, hey, if I'm if I'm reading a William Lane Craig book, but I want to do YouTube, how you know how should I be reading this book? And if that's what you mean, or if you're reading a philosophy book and you're thinking, hey, what can I make a video uh, out of this about? Uh, you should be looking for for a couple things. One is what would this make a uh, an interesting video? Is this something that people would be interested in? And uh, two, another question is how many people have addressed this, right? So if you're making a video and you know other people have not addressed that or you've never seen it or you search on YouTube and you can't find it, then that might that might be good. So uh, I'll just give you an example. I think uh, I think Bobby Conway's best video or at least one of his top videos on his channel was was titled uh, What is the Categorical Imperative? Now, that's a perfect example of uh, that's a perfect example. Now, why would that be? Why would that be his top video or one of his top videos? And the reason is, even though there's not uh, a super high demand for something like the categorical imperative, there's a low supply. There aren't a lot of videos on the categorical imperative. So when basically whenever anyone goes to introduction to philosophy class and they get to Kant, they, they read about a categorical imperative and now people study on YouTube. So they look up what is the categorical imperative. And if you have the video on that, then... Uh, then you, you you people find you and so kind of look for stuff like that hey here's something that would be interesting here's something that people might be searching for but other people aren't posting videos on this so maybe i need to uh maybe i should i should be the one doing this what do you guys think yeah no so uh that's good and if you if you meant it in the way that i understood it then i'd say that like um you have to try to see what's transferable like i spent a lot of years studying apologetics and philosophy and stuff like that and i take that same thinking into my videos and stuff like that too but i want to make sure it's content that's going to be very I, I this my goal was always never to be an academic channel i always wanted it to be um accessible to anybody but try to give them that same truth um in ways that are just practical right without trying to compromise the integrity of that so um just try to think of uh, all these concepts and stuff and you do you, a lot of times you'll lose a little bit of the rigor when you um use other kinds of words but try to see if you can think of ways to use simple words to describe the stuff that you're trying to get in philosophy and mix it with something that's going on or something that people can relate to, you know what I mean? Whether it's in current events or whether it's in um, just practical stuff, something that people can relate to. So that way you kind of bridge that world of making it more YouTube accessible, unless your channel is going to be more academic focused. You know, if that's the case, then you can keep it. But yeah, so that's what I'd say. Yeah, actually to kind of piggyback on that too, like I think that there's some uh, branches of philosophy, if you will, or areas of philosophy that are easier to marry to the YouTube world than others. Like, so for example, if you want to talk about like, you know, I don't know, abstract objects or something like that, or, you know, just are, are numbers real or aren't they, you know, or, you know, or whatever, you know, some those hot kind of topics things. there, Adam, got some yeah. hot topics there, <laughs> bro. <laughs> That's my point. That's my point. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I mean, there's not really a lot of ways you can go with that to bring it down to the everyday person. You see what I'm saying? Whereas something like morality, you know, morality is going to permeate just about everything that people encounter. Like it's in the headlines, it's in people's personal lives, in your everyday life. So, you know, uh, things like the moral argument or just anything in the realm of morality is going to be a lot easier to bring into that everyday, you know, um, sphere, so to speak. And so kind of to, to John's point. So you, want, you kind of want to think about what areas of philosophy are you interested in and, you know, what... Now, how would you go about, you know, bringing that down to the average man, so to speak? You know, some in some branches are easier to do that than others. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, William Lane Craig seems to think that abstract object, objects are, are interesting. I mean, that, that's like his project, right? That's that's. His I, I love pl uh, yeah. Platonism or studying that stuff. Platonism and thinking you about love Platonism. Like, Wait, what's going on here? No, man? I like thinking about it. I like thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the abstract objects and stuff like that. I do Peter love Man that. that going little on? Weird okay. But I'll never use it in a practical conversation, probably for the most part. You know, mm -hmm. but it does right. parallel with a lot of stuff in philosophy. But I love that topic. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. uh, uh, speaking of. Uh, Speaking of YouTube videos, uh, John posted a video today. John posted John posted a video today. It's nice and short. Let's go ahead and check it out real quick. I went ahead and uh, I have it right here. Let's go ahead and check out John's uh, short video today. And so, John, you can talk about what you're doing here because this is different from some of your other videos where you're talking about a cultural issue or explaining an apologetics topic or something like this. Here you're doing something 
totally different. So let's go ahead and check out John's video from today. <laughs> Why are you sitting in the dark like a vampire? Do you know that the principle of sufficient reason by Alex Cruz is the same thing as ex nihilo ho nihil fit? Um, uh, no. Why would I know that? I'm sorry, I thought you also learned to love the Lord with all of your mind. Alright, yo, yo, why are you bugging? You alright? I'm not bugging. I'm preparing to save the world. Yeah. Alright, well, yeah, I was just letting you know that we ain't got no toilet paper. Bunch of spooky acting brothers buying up all the toilet paper and panic and all that. We've been out since yesterday. Yes, I already know. I'll be fine, Daryl. And I'll be fine for at least the next month. Word? You got a secret stash in here? No, I've been using Richard Carrier's book on the historicity of Jesus. 712 pages should suffice for now. Don't worry, I saved Joel Osteen's your best life now if you need some too. Okay, see, now that's just nasty. It sounds painful. All right, well, yo, I just came to check on you. I don't think I've seen you come out of your room since the quarantine started. Yo, are you depressed or something? <laughs> depressed? Are you joking me? Now I can do what I've dreamed of doing ever since I discovered apologetics. I can read all day without ever having to talk to anyone, ever. Except on the internet. Yeah but you haven't even came out for food. How are you still alive right now? If I keep reading all of these books, not only will I be able to speak whatever language presuppositional apologetics speak, I'll be able to speak in nothing but Dr. William Lane Craig quotes. Yeah, but you haven't even came out for food. How are you still alive right now? Who has time to eat when they're preparing to save the world? But we're in the middle of a global pandemic. So how's you being all cooped up in your room all day gonna help save the world? Simple. If people only knew about the ontological argument, they would convert in masses. Our neighbors have just been practically begging and waiting for someone to tell them about the constants and quantities concerning the initial conditions of the universe, the anthropic principle, the negative ontology of platonic and abstract objects, the correspondence theory right, of truth, stop. the irreducible complexity of the cell. What the, the fish are you talking about? Fool, stop talking crazy. Talk English to me. What's wrong with you? <sighs> Nothing is wrong with me, Daryl. Okay, you know what? You know what? You need help. I'm gonna call a doctor. The only doctor I need is Dr. Craig. Dr. Craig as in Dr. William Lane Craig? Nah, nah fam, you need Dr. Phil. Only a Phil is short for philosophy. What? Man, don't nobody care about that stuff. And in my discipline, philosophy, I think, frankly, there's a renaissance of theistic belief. And there is a virtual revolution going on in Anglo-American philosophy right now where Christian philosophers represent a significant and respected um, voice in the philosophical community. What, what, wait, what was that? What was what? That voice, that voice you just did, it came out of nowhere. <laughs> I don't think even Russell would have affirmed that something could come into being without a cause even if for some eternally existing universe, you might say, well, it just exists with no explanation. Okay, all right, all right, I'm bugging. All right, this can't be right, this can't be right. I'm high. I don't even smoke weed, but I know I'm high because that don't make no sense, there ain't no explanation for it. So that uh, objection to the argument is simply based on a misunderstanding of the first premise. What do you mean? All right, so that was a good uh, John McCray video. Uh, I agree with uh, <laughs> John Beavers. John Beavers here said, "I like how he gets the us," <laughs> <laughs> meaning that even when Craig went um, John turned his um. <laughs> <laughs> so John, John, run us through your uh, process here, uh, really quick. Uh, wh where'd you come up with the idea for that video? Man, honestly, like. 
I, I just had, I, I don't know. I mean, I was just thinking how funny it would be like for for apologists during quarantine. I was thinking like what apologists are all doing right now, like during the quarantine. And I was thinking they're probably all doing like what we all want to do is just like sit there and just read a whole bunch of books and stuff like that too. So, so that's where I kind of started. And a lot of my skits, man, I don't know what it is. All my skits that I write, they just... Uh, for so I don't spend a lot of time thinking. I figure it out as I'm writing. That's not usually how I do videos, but with my skits, every one of them I just like start writing and then it just comes, you know. So I actually got four videos in this this series so far uh, with the quarantine stuff. So mm-hmm. this was the first one that I released today. So. Um, although you were, uh, you did have that lion part where you said you don't smoke weed because uh, there's got no. I, there's no other reason to live in Colorado. Uh, so I, <laughs> no. I know I know why I know why you're living in that horrible horrible state. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fun what do you mean fact. I've never smoked weed once in my entire life. I don't Actually. believe that, bro. Why? <laughs> and come on, you live in Colorado. There is only one reason anyone lives in Colorado now. Come on. He's wearing green right now. It's yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Other than the fact that Colorado is the best state in the entire nation. Plus, plus his eyes always look like he's half asleep and he's always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got big eyes. That's big eye problems. They get dry easy. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Uh, let's go on with some questions. And um, what do you guys say that you want to answer? I also have some. Uh, let me see. Uh, Mr. Phil Fox in the super chat says, "Did any of you pull some old stuff and reissue it as updated content?" Vocab is the coolest cat on YouTube. I'm Mr. Phil Fox, and I approve this message. Uh, yeah, I guess he's talking about vocab. That vocab will take <laughs> stuff from like two years ago and re-upload it. <laughs> he's doing premieres and stuff. What that do you mean? Like five years ago. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I'm about to do. I'm putting out Islamicize Me uh, next uh, the, at the end of this month. <laughs> Vocab's been channel. recycling videos for like two years now. Yeah. <laughs> right. One <laughs> one thing recycle. though is is I don't recycle stuff that's been on my own channel. It, with the rare exception is if I take a highlight or snippet from something, but I never uh, have, that, to my knowledge, directly re-uploaded a video I already did and then just basically put it up again. Haven't done that. However, my homie stuff that they've done, putting some stuff on the channel, yes, or stuff I've been involved with on other channels, yes, I've done that as well. And so I, I definitely have done that. And uh, honestly, when you have more subs and more people interested, if you repackage it the right way, it actually can work. So I know you guys don't necessarily do that kind of thing, but it, it, it does work. And I'm very uh, interested to see what it's like when we re-drop Islamicize Me. So we're starting um, the Thursday of Ramadan is when it's going to start. And then I'm going to do two a week hey, every day. Hey, you should you should be pushing this because, uh, I mean, Muslims can still do Ramadan in that they, they can still fast during during the day mm-hmm. and stuff. So they can still do that. But it's not going to be the sort of wide, you know, broader event that uh, – that it would nor would normally be without the coronavirus. So you can actually push it along those lines and say, hey, you know, Muslims, since you're gonna be stuck at home for Ramadan, not be out, you know, meeting with everybody, why not watch a little uh, little show? I've got <laughs> okay, I've, his next I've video got is gonna his, his next premiere is gonna be like who's gonna win the election, Hillary or Donald Trump? <laughs> who's, who's your Christian stand with? Hillary Hillary or Trump? <laughs> That's amazing. That's well, that, that, that kind of stuff. Hillary or Trump. <laughs> that, that kind of stuff. Actually, that kind of stuff. Uh, what I do with that kind of stuff is I'll um, edit it, take out the stuff that's too time sensitive, and I do that kind of stuff as uh, my private exclusive uploads for my supporters. So once once a month, I do exclusive uploads just for supporters that they have an unlisted link to. And when it's like dated stuff, so this November, I do have a thing where we talked about Mitt Romney becoming president because you know <laughs> yeah. Mormon. Look, look, and, and then just, and then he dubbed it, and then he dubbed it and changed it to buy Bi- and changed it to Biden. Or something. <laughs> yeah, but, but the thing is, the discussion we had on it is timeless because we discussed what it's. Uh, we discussed like when Joseph Smith tried to become president. A lot of people don't know that Joseph Smith tried to run for president. So we discussed all that, and then we discussed like. Um, related issues ab- about you know Christians voting for people of different you know backgrounds and stuff like that. So there's a lot of important stuff, 
but uh, you know, it'll be just for supporters, and I edit out some of the stuff that's like obviously dated about it. So, so, so basically, some, if we take a closer look, we'll realize that the vocab hasn't dropped an actual new video in like two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be nice. <laughs> don't have to write. Don't have to just jack. <laughs> between <laughs> between that and live streaming, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, well, to be fair though, vocab uh, write uh, wrote a lot of the Islamicize Me series too. Like Wood had all the ideas and stuff, and vocab would write like ton of scripts while wow, we were all always working on different stuff too you know so well so, that, yeah, that, but, that's a that that's a yeah a lot of it a, a lot of the stuff came down to that it's okay we're in this skit uh other person who's not in this skit go write a script and yeah, uh yeah that was that wild. Is true that so i am better at uh doing that kind of stuff those produce videos and stuff basically if i'm more in a team mm. situation because then i enjoy it but me sitting down by myself writing a script, doing a video like with the dope one that you did, John, which is epic, that you did today, recording by myself, and then editing afterwards, I feel so lonely, and I feel like it's just solitude-inducing and so solitary that I it's hard for me to do that. That's why I go live in so much stuff, because yeah. I like to talk to the people and enjoy stuff. I, I'm not – my research enough. beforehand is the studying on the topic I'm going to talk about, you know? Yeah. And I don't know, that's kind of why. That's I think it's because you're an extrovert, bro, because I am I live in, in my head because I'm an introvert. That's where I'm most comfortable is right here by myself. You know what I mean? But you're an extrovert. So you and Wood, you guys are extroverts, too, I noticed. So, like, you guys get more juice when you're around, when we're all together and all that. You guys get more creative. And for me, I'm more creative. I just sit in my room by myself and just start writing. You know what I mean? So it was weird. But so you actually you. are like the guy that you were portraying in your video. That, that's uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that that was the nerdy me. one though. The nerdy. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah no. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's Dar actually if you notice, me. the other guy is Daryl. So clearly, the other guy is actually John. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> when I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall. When I'm <laughs> in the back of my mind, I hear my conscience call. That's, that's Yo, a, yeah. Well, Remember well, when well. we were out in uh when I came out there before we even recorded Islamicize Me, me and you were working on uh, skits and stuff, and we were just cranking out stuff. Remember too? That's usually that how it was. Awesome. Goes, huh? Yeah, that it was. was dope. That's so fun. like I love John's a perfect um like collab partner like that because uh, like you have good ideas, but then um you're kind of like down to just do whatever, and then you you're you like know the basics to me you know of, of like yep. the basic camera setup the basic light and then you can edit well and so it's like perfect because it's like a little team thing so i had a lot of fun yeah. we we knocked out a bunch yeah. uh during that time so that, you always pick dope. up off me well though too because you always like whatever i say okay like do this or something like that you got it like right away always too and then you do better than i thought you know so that's why it was good we were we work good together like that see that's the thing though too is i like working with a person i would yeah. do a lot more produced type videos if I had a partner, it's so I, I just until I kind of have uh, homie, I'm pr I probably would use mainly live streaming, editing some stuff. But like if I had a partner, it'd be a different situation. Right. You know, what, yeah. what do you think? I mean, like how long did it take you all to kind of, I guess, understand your own creative process? I feel like that's a thing. Like we were talking about people you know, getting into YouTube early. Did it take like a while to kind of find that zone or? Well, I always did uh, music and stuff, like growing up and all that. So it's kind of the same thing to me. You know what I mean? Like I just get feel creative or something and just start writing, and then that's how it usually goes, you know. Or just getting. If I, I'm always like, this is the bad part of me is that I'm always waiting for an idea to spark, and once I get one just idea, I can go off that. You know what I mean? But like the bad part about it is it's hard for me to just schedule stuff steady because i'm always waiting on inspiration awful awful place uh, to, you know happen, but. john dude you you, you got to get out of colorado and move move near me because out. i'm like a fire hose of awesome ideas i know <laughs> I, they just i'm around they just keep pouring out of me and i only end up doing like one percent of the ideas that ever pop into my head and they're all awesome <laughs> thank god for that actually <laughs> that David only does one percent of the ideas that actually pop in his head. It is true you're like a fire hose, David. Except just take out the part, the fire part. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, what, what the heck? Wow. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. We got a. Hey, uh, hey, hey, real quick though, David. Do you remember how John said he did music and stuff growing up? Mm -hmm. Don't you think sometime we should play some of his old music he used to do oh, on your yeah, channel? Oh yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> People would be. It's lied. a party. Everybody's party. Hey, hey, Becky. <laughs> And everything is massively auto tune and and everyone will, but everyone will be like gosh john why are you doing apologetics and and ruining your your ultimate gift to the world music 
<laughs> Mocap already got the shades on. He's ready for the party. You look like y'all. Party, <laughs> and we go <laughs> <laughs> Hey, oh, I do miss music. I, 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 miss, I do miss music. That is the truth. But I think obviously apologetics is something far more important and something that I'd rather dedicate my life to. You emerge the two, man. Nobody, is, nobody has successfully emerged music and apologetics yet. Oh, there's a reason for that. <laughs> Would you want to sing a song about the Kalam? Would you ever it can be done, huh? Oh, actually, it has been done. But we listened to that. Remember Wood and Vocab when we were in uh, some How's state, San Diego or something? Yeah. How's it That's right. Oh, and the whole CD on sure. apologetics, like intelligent design. Isn't the CD on intelligent sure. design or something? Yeah, it's called yeah, Origins. It That's the shirt I'm wearing right now. <laughs> See? One more, one more reason why I'm a Calvinist, because stuff like that happens. <laughs> Well, King, I don't think they're Calvinists, though. So no, they're not. But oh. they respect the, they respect the Old Testament, so they they're not too far afield. <laughs> hey, hey, we got a special request here. Uh, John Buckley said, "David, I need some magic backpack, please." Oh, the ba magic backpack's right over there. No, yeah. Oh, hey, hey, show him the backpack. <laughs> is that actually the uh, backpack? Yeah, that yeah. is the, that is the backpack. <laughs> That is the backpack, but I got the song. Hey, vocab, I'm gonna play the song real quick for for for, okay, uh, okay, for John hold on, Buckley. I got it. Well, thank you, my friend. All right, here we go. This is it. This is there. the real magic backpack. And the way you always will know it's the real one is this blue seal of approval right here. Yeah, because I because nobody can do that. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's, it's not it, 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 it's not just the fact of the style it's this yeah he's gonna sell like five of those for for a hundred a piece uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go everyone here we go here's the magic backpack song all right <laughs> Nice. There we go. All right, that's your magic backpack for the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Oh, uh, actually, it's a good. Uh, it's a good question from. Let me see. Let me scroll down to it. Um. John Beavers asks. How often should you upload videos? I added an hour-long video and am scheduling smaller segments of that long one. How often should those be uploaded? What do you guys think? Backpack, magic backpack. Oh, whoa. That's in my ear. Oh, I was like, huh? <laughs> How about some magic backpack right there? Is this, yeah. This, like, that's scary. Scary. <laughs> um, I think that you, there's two things you want to keep in a mind when you're posting your videos. One is that you don't want to just post just the post. You want to make sure that you try to at least make sure all your videos at least you think are good. You know what I mean? Or at least you're um, you're happy with them somewhere. You don't want to just post a whole bunch of crap because every time you post stuff that people don't watch, YouTube um, it adds information to the algorithm which says these people are or this person's not watching these videos, these skipping over videos. So then I'll stop showing the video to that person, right? So that's one thing. So, um, but the more the better if it's good. But I think the most important thing, which is the thing I don't do, because um, I'm do everything wrong all the time, is schedule the same time for your video to come out every time it does. So like Mike Winger has his Tuesday night live stream at the same time, you know. So everybody knows every Tuesday at this time I need to log in. So that way I can uh, watch this live stream, you know. So if you can get on a schedule, all the better, too, you know, if you can keep up with the schedule. Um, but I always just post randomly because I'm disorganized. I'm trying to get better, though. So pray for me. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts on that, guys? Well, no. Well, I guess maybe to kind of to balance that out, like, I mean, um, I, mean I, think, I think John's absolutely right. But I, I think I was on the, the wrong end of that same concern in that I was kind of, I found myself pulling punches too much to where I'd have content and I wasn't putting it out. And I still, I still need to, you know, get my volume up even now, you know, but um, I think you don't want to get like so cautious that you don't end up putting out anything, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like my own worst critic, you know, so I'll, I'll criticize my own scripts and stuff like that 20 times before I actually drop them. Sometimes you got to just kind of push past that, you know what I mean? And, and just you know, get it out there, you know? Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I agree. At the end of the day, you got to also basically do what works for you and your family, you know. So like, 
There's nights I don't go live because of certain things with the kids, and that's just how it is. Even though there's a lot of good opportunities I could do, and there's some stuff I miss out on, it just doesn't matter. And same thing with Adam. I know a lot of times he has to end up doing stuff late because of the family, and to a certain extent, that's just is what it is. You know, you got to prioritize. So it's not based upon the YouTube algorithm; it's based upon your real life, and it is what it is, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. and I'll say it. It kind of de- a lot of it's going to depend on where you're at. You know what I mean? In in uh in your channel's history you know what i mean uh if you're just getting started out you don't want to be cranking out uh videos every day you don't have enough followers and you're gonna you're gonna burn out you're gonna burn out cranking out videos every day and people aren't going to be watching those um once you have a bunch of followers like like i i would like to post videos every day um i do that sometimes but uh I never, I'm never able to keep it up for very, you know, very long, just because there are other things going on um, in life. But uh, you know, if you, if you're, if you're getting started out, I would say, but, but can, even, even if you're not, however you're posting, try and make it consistent, right? So, I would say one or two videos per week. If you're just getting started out, I would stick with one a week. I would stick with yep. one a week for a year or so right uh then try to go to two a week and you're 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 pretty fine you're pretty fine sticking with something like that and then if you're if you're if you're if you're getting to the point where you like just full-time youtube that's all you're doing then you might want to you know try and three or four or five a week or something like that but um uh yeah it's going to be hard to grow your channel if you're not being you know coming out with something new uh each week um you know i'm gonna add something on um to what vocab said too like uh, you mentioned like family <clears throat> for anybody who's who's starting out or like really serious about getting into YouTube or whatever. And let's say you're married, then you definitely want to communicate with your spouse in terms of like what that's really going to look like. You know, how much time are you going to really allocate towards uh, filming, editing, when you plan on editing? So for me, like Vocab mentioned, it's kind of what made me think about it. like most of the time if I'm recording stuff, it's a, it's at night after the kids go to bed. You know what I'm saying so eight thirty nine o'clock your know, kids are in bed and tucked away that's when I get it in and do my thing so I might be up all night you know recording and and, and uh, editing or whatever and so my wife understands that there's gonna be a couple times a week that you know that's that's what I'm gonna be doing or like right now I'm live with you guys so I had to make sure that you know I, I can't spend you know my whole my son's whole birthday reading apologetics books like you know John's character and then hop on live you know with with, uh, with you guys you know my son's birthday you know I got to make sure I'm present you know and being a dad you know, and being a husband you know what I mean those kind of things really matter and they prevent um, strain in your in your household that will then ultimately prevent you from doing what it is that you're passionate about doing so yeah. having the home front squared away and making sure it's, it's like the scripture says I mean how can two walk together unless they be agreed. I'm saying your spouse needs to be in agreement with what you're saying. And the more I learn about what I'm doing, the more I learn about what that's going to look like day to day. I always try to communicate that to my wife so she's not caught off guard by, okay, oh, you know, he's doing this or he's doing that. So I always try to make sure I'm communicating. Mm -hmm. Um, We have uh, (laughs) we have a Muslim truth and courage here. Says uh, David Wood insults all the prophets of Allah. He is not a he is not a follower of Jesus Christ. He is with follower of Masia Dajjal, so <laughs> the, the Antichrist. Uh, no truth and courage. I don't know if you. I don't know if you uh, haven't paid attention, but I make fun of one false prophet, and that's your uh, false prophet Muhammad. And what's interesting is the insult you just tossed my way is exactly what's true of your prophet. Your prophet insults everyone by simply rewriting what the prophet said to line up with him right now now i could i could do that right i could say actually i'm a prophet and all previous prophets agreed with me muhammad talked about me he said guys uh, I'm Muhammad, and I suck, and it's a good thing that there's a greater prophet coming. His name's David Wood. And I could say that, and if people were stupid enough to believe in me, then you know I could convince people of that. But uh, notice, if I were to do that, and I were to say, "Hey, yeah, Muhammad just talked about me, and and you know that's what he did," I'd be insulting. I'd be insulting Muhammad in a different way from where I, I, I normally insult Muhammad. I normally insult Muhammad just by you know stating facts about him. And uh, the things he did are so bad that they just they come across as insults, uh, even if you just read them off a page. But um, yeah, if, if, if I were to just rewrite what Muhammad said and did to line up with what I think, 
then I'd be insulting him in a different way. I'd just be lying about him. But guess what? That's exactly what your prophet did. Your prophet went to Abraham and Moses and John the Baptist and Jesus, and he just wrote his own theology onto their mouths. And my goodness, my goodness, can you imagine the judgment that awaits your fake prophet for leading so many people astray by doing that? It's just, uh, gosh, I don't think I can insult this guy enough because, yeah. Uh, He's, 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 let's face it, he's pretty, he's pretty fake, right? All right, guys, what do you think? Yeah, it kind of made me think of the, um, <clears throat> that the, uh, the Joker joint y'all did where Joker was in the boom, boom room. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, there's that line. I can't, I don't know if you wrote it or, or, or vocab wrote it, but it's like, uh, the Joker gets hype about Allah being the master deceiver or something mm -hmm. like that. And it's just like, you know, it made me think about, um, again, you know, circling back to Muhammad being being a false prophet. I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's wild. I don't know if, if it's possible for there to be a, a, a mound of literature demonstrating that somebody is a false prophet more so than you have with Muhammad. It's almost like he went out of his way to show you I'm not the guy. You know I'm saying? It's, like, it's like he was he was doing everything he possibly could to paint himself as being, you know, not a, a, of God. And people still rock with him, you know what I mean? But, it, you know, that, that's all I got to say about it. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was David's uh, masterpiece. I only added a few that parts. Was, of that okay. that was good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. J uh, David killed it on the script and the acting, but that was pretty much his baby, uh, like 98% or something like that. Well, you know? what, what was cool is I, I just uh, I, I, I wrote down a bunch of Joker quotations. So I, I, I mm -hmm. go to the, the different movie scripts and stuff and, and uh, the, the classic comic book line and the, the classic Joker passages. I would uh, put those lines down and then just sort of built the script around that. Right. I said, OK, here are all these quotes. How can they actually work into work into the script? Uh, yep. Here's a here's a question. Uh, Hayden Tang says, uh, what equipment would you recommend for YouTube? Cell phone to start. After that, I uh, I don't. I mean, I'll tell you what I have. I have a Sony. Uh, what do I even have? A Sony um, A R two. Now I have that. Uh, I started with a uh, uh, handy cam. What is this? I don't even remember. I don't remember if it was Sony. I can't remember. I think it's Sony little handheld ha camcorder. Then I went to that Sony. A7S, and now I have the A7R2. I just like the Sony, uh, but that's just me. But I don't think you need all that, right? Like, people um, do very well just holding their cell phones and stuff like that, too. It depends on the style of video you want to do, too, you know, so. Yeah, 100%. Uh, John and David know more about that than me, but it also depends, like, are you, you know, thinking more about live streaming or recording stuff and then doing it? Because, you know, you'll need a, a good camera that you can – take out and about but if you're doing live stream you might be able to start by just getting yourself a decent even if depending on what you got at the time 30 40 50 dollar webcam that's a little bit better than the camera and your laptop for example same thing with the first mic you get it might just be one of the usb mics that's not as powerful as like an xlr you know phantom powered type of microphone but start out with you just improve your audio a little bit but really it's about content and you really can start doing so much with your phone that most people have a version of a phone that's that's usable for it and then just go from there like you just constantly make those little improvements i don't think people need to buy everything and then start that is that doesn't make sense to me it's like you start with what you have little by little and and you can grow into those other things but uh david has probably all kinds of advice i know adam's got a pretty good camera now and uh, editing setup so i mean and he's even got a brick wall in the background yeah, I know. He, <laughs> he got that brick from outside, too. Actually, right, all yeah, inside? I, I just set it up in every room that I go to, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's well, all crooked, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, actually, it is right now. <laughs> you know, I, I just kind of threw it up. But yeah, actually, I would defer to you guys in terms, as far as the technology stuff. But um, I am looking to get myself a nice little webcam because I want to start doing more lives. Um, but then again, actually, I think the cameras I have, I probably could use as a webcam. So just, I think, you know, too, maybe touring around with what you already have. You might already have some stuff that Maybe you can kind of maximize it and get more out of it than you than you might think, you know. So yeah. just kind of starting there, I think, is always good. Look what you have in your house. And um, uh, they say audio is the most important too. You know what I mean? Uh, more important than video. Um, I'm deaf basically, so I don't really hear the audio sound difference as much. So uh, don't take my advice on this. But um, a lot of people have this uh, Yeti. It's it's called a Blue, or it's called a Yeti, but it's made by the brand Blue. Um, and that's what a lot of people use for like um, live stuff and all that too. Um, and I have a road mic for my video mic, just a shotgun mic. 
Yeah, John just gave you all a, uh, a pro tip there. Um, if you ever if you ever have to choose between higher quality video and mm -hmm. uh, audio, which one do you pick? Uh, lots of people instinctively would say video, right? But but think about this: if you are w trying to watch someone speaking and they have wonderful 4K video, but you can't understand what they're saying because the audio is crap, um, how long are you going to watch that? probably not long. On the other hand, if you're watching someone and the video is low quality, but the audio is perfect and you can understand everything that's being said, well, as long as you're interested in what's being said, then that's fine. In fact, I mean, if you look at, you know, channels like uh, uh, um, Inspiring Philosophy, he's usually not even on the camera. He's just got graphics up. And so, uh, yeah, audio, audio is key. So as far as equipment, uh, yeah, I go with cell phone first. No need to break the bank getting a ton of equipment. And, and gosh, I mean, cell phones. I mean, I, you know, for years I was for years I was making videos with this. Right, this this camera has been all over the place. This has been this has been uh, this camera has been repeatedly attacked in public places. This camera has been in a, uh, a police locker in the city of Dearborn. Um, but this is this is what me and the Beatles started recording on. But uh, you know, if you have anything beyond probably an iPhone one, it probably records better than this thing uh, does. And if, if you go back in my videos to the first few years that I was making videos, they're recording on this. They're pretty low quality, but the content was dope, ladies and gentlemen. The content was good. And so those, the, you go back to those videos, and some of those will have three, four, five, six hundred thousand, sometimes millions of, of views. Um, so anyway, the point the point of all that was is if I was recording on this and it's and it's, it was fairly low quality stuff and my audio was bad because for for my first videos I wasn't even using for my, probably my first two years of videos I wasn't even using a mic like not no kind of mic it was just this camera was eight feet away from me and there's a little mic on top of it so it's picking up noise and so you can look at the the, the audio's garbage the video's garbage content was good and those videos uh, did well so again content is king. Content is king, consistency is queen, and so the quit the equipment is secondary. But uh, yeah, so yes, start with uh, and notice if you if you use your uh, even if you use your cell phone like an iPhone or something like that, uh, if it's if it's something that came out within the last few years, it gets uh, at least you know something like 1080 resolution. And so if you got that in front of you, but you can also get little lapel mics for like 20 or 30 bucks that plug in to the side of your phone and you just clip them on your clip them on your chest uh, or you can even get the ones that are just wireless right in, in other words it it uh what is that bluetooth or something like that what, what whatever it is where you're talking uh into your phone so you get stuff like that you can get all that cheap and still be still be really high quality and again much much higher quality with that than than anything i was using in my early days so uh yeah focus on making awesome content and use whatever you can get as far as uh as far as equipment, um, Ada Wong asks, "Will you invite women on your channel?" No, he's sexist. No, I would. Uh, I have to. I have to point out though, um, women can't really do apologetics. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you already have. You have vocab right here. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, this is this is something. Uh, notice there aren't a lot. There aren't a lot of women apologists on YouTube. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I should get, I, I, I keep wanting to get Hatun Tosh from the UK on my show, but every time I'm about to say, Hey, let, let's, let's go live. It, it ends up being one of those times when I, I don't go live for like five or six weeks or something like that. So it never ends up happening, but definitely want to get Hatun Tosh on there. Um, uh, Mary Jo Sharp would be cool. And there are, you know, there, there are, you know, there, there are, uh, there are female apologists, but I have to, I have to point out ladies, I'm saying this. For you ladies who are interested in apologetics, there aren't a lot. There aren't nearly as many women doing uh, apologetics in public as there are men. So there's a big. We're we're, we're talking about niche content, right? Niche content, finding yeah. a niche yeah. and jumping in there. Uh, I was at the table with Mary Jo Sharp before anyone had heard of Mary Jo Sharp, and it was me, Mary Jo Sharp, Nabil Qureshi, uh, and we we're out there in California. She was just going through the MA program at Biola. And uh, she understood it back then. She understood, hey, there are not a lot of women in apologetics. So I understand if I do the hard work now and I start speaking and stuff like that, um, that, uh, you know, my, my ministry can take off. She was absolutely correct. Guess what? That's uh, that's still true. So, yo, uh, Roxby just said, uh, what's up, Roxby? She said uh, Mary Jo Sharp just started a channel. I didn't know that. She did. That's awesome. oh, that's dope. dope. That's dope. Yep. 
So good. And um, you guys check out um, the, some of our friends, uh, Mama Bear Apologetics, too. Um, it's yeah. like a, a lot of female apologetics, and, and they're really good, too. So check out Mama Bear Apologetics mm-hmm. if you're mm-hmm. interested in that. Yeah, and if you're looking for a female apologist but can't find a woman, do the next best thing. Uh, just look for somebody with long hair and feminine traits. You got Adam Coleman right there. <laughs> <laughs> next best there thing. Go. You, guys are, <laughs> you guys are brutal. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hey, here's Not, a, on the Urban Apologetics tip, shout out to Lisa Fields and Nefer Nitty, although she's more on Facebook Live. But yeah. there's uh, Miss Titus there's too. We also got yep. Miss Titus too is out there putting in uh, dope work. They like yep. said Nefer Nitty for sure, mm-hmm. Lisa Fields, and um, yeah, definitely want to check them out. Um, Good look. Hey, here you go. Truth and Courage says uh, Allah drowned the Pharaoh. Allah can punish you anytime, David Wood. Um, actually, I don't know if Allah drowned the Pharaoh because if you read the Quran, you get uh, it contradicts itself. So some of the time sounds like Allah drowned the Pharaoh, and other times Allah says he saved the Pharaoh. And so uh, you're 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 Allah doesn't even know whether he drowned Pharaoh or not. So how are you saying <laughs> how are you saying what Allah can do? <laughs> you want to do a live stream on that truth and courage? We'd be happy to go through the Quran and what it says. All right, here we go. Uh, this is from Eric Matson. Eric Matson said, "Hey guys, what do you think about?" podcasts this would be an area for adam uh, hey guys what do you think about podcasts it seems most apologists focus primarily on youtube is there a reason for this jonathan and i talk about jonathan man uh, jonathan and i are trying to figure out what is best happy birthday david so uh that's from eric matson and jonathan man they are messianic jews and so they're basically uh they're basically up you know they're, they're they're guys who are getting started now uh they've been doing their uh they've been getting their their uh their academic backgrounds in place and stuff like that but they're they notice that there's kind of there's kind of michael brown and then not a lot of other people after michael brown so they're sort of jumping yeah. jumping into uh jumping into that but uh guys what do you think about podcasts and Nope. I, I'm completely I'm completely useless on this. I I I don't know if I've I'm I, sure I'm sure I've been no, on I'd someone's say, podcast, but I've never I don't think I've ever made a podcast. No, I'd say um, it's a target audience thing. Younger people just don't read blogs and they don't um, typically listen to podcasts. Statistically, um, usually they get most they spend most of their time on YouTube. So if you're looking for the younger generations, uh, YouTube's a better bet. If you're looking for um, you know, around Woods age, around like 70s to 80s um, age range, then then you probably want to start a podcast. Yeah, you know, we're really about middle age. Um, people just tend to listen to podcasts more. So um, it depends on really your target audience. I think with that kind of topic there, like the messianic um, stuff, um, it probably seems pretty fit for a podcast. There's a podcast I've been listening to lately um, called the the Bema Podcast. And um, it's from like a Messianic Jew and stuff, too. But um, I like it because I'm, you know, obviously into this stuff, too. But um, they probably do well. So I don't know how the analytics and stuff work. Adam will be able to tell you in a sec. I don't know how the analytics work. You can see how many views and stuff people get. But I would assume that they are doing pretty well. But it's hard to say. Yeah, so I, I've got a soft spot for podcasts. That's that's kind of how I cut my teeth as an apologist. You know, I started with the True ID podcast. And, um, you know, I'm, I've was rebuked heavily, you know, what I'm saying by, by my friends here and, and with good reason. I mean, I think because John's right, depending on on who your target audience is, uh, podcasts may not necessarily be right for you. Um, I will say that there's some pros and cons, but but ultimately, I think there's a there's a bigger uh, margin for, for error when it comes to like doing YouTube to be out, like, believe it or not, like with, with podcasts, you're either Joe Rogan or you're like, nobody, <laughs> it's just like, there's not a whole lot of in between, you know what I'm saying? It's like either you go big with it and you're a beast at it, or you're just going to get like a couple of views trickling here or there. And so that's kind of what you have to think about is like, what kind of connection do you have? Like what kind of firepower do you have to promote your podcast? It's, it's a lot harder to do. Uh, than, than people realize, you know what I'm saying? Um, I actually was, my podcast was doing all right. I mean, I was, I was getting a couple thousand, you know, listens a month, which is fine. But interestingly, like, it was doing better when I was all, like, I guess, kind of complementing it with YouTube content, you know, while I was kind of li- allowing YouTube doing like a short video and then have that kind of feed one of the episodes I was doing. That's that's when the, the podcast really started to pick up. And so it just which really actually more so demonstrates the power of, of, of YouTube. So, you know, take your, your um you know, your, your target audience into account. Now I will say there I think there are some personality types that work better with a podcast than they do YouTube. So I, I kinda wanna, you know, leave that out there because I mean, like my personality, like I, I love detail. You know what I'm saying like I could 
I've got some, <laughs> I've got some podcasts where I was talking for like three hours, which is terrible. It's a terrible idea. You know what I'm saying? But in my mind, you know, it just kind of, it just kind of worked. And I was able to get out everything I wanted to say, then break it into pieces and end up being a couple of different episodes and it just worked like that. So if you're like real detailed and you just feel like you have to get everybody, everything from A to Z when you're explaining just like some minor topic, then you might want to try a podcast because it gives you more freedom. But your listeners are going to kind of come to expect that from you. Whereas, you know, doing YouTube videos, nobody's going to sit around for three hours, you know, for the most part. And watch you break down the Kalam cosmological argument. You gotta kind of be in and out with it. So there's pros and cons. You know, I'm tapering off from it. I'll probably, you know, leave it alone. If anything, I might pre-record seasons at a time and then just kind of drop them just randomly. Uh, but uh, for for who I'm trying to target at this time, you know, I've got to leave it alone. If I was full time like apologetics, then I probably would, you know, do both. You know, what I'm saying I probably would do a hybrid, but um, it's just it's not in the cards for me right now. Yeah, uh, Jonathan, yeah, Jonathan Soko, uh, he says, I don't know, the podcast, mar- the podcast market is huge. I'm not sure I agree with Adam. Um, yeah, that's right, Adam. He don't agree. Okay, son. I mean, you know. <laughs> no, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> you I should feel I that, though. That. I mean, I, I don't <laughs> know. I'm, I'm not saying that. <laughs> no, I, mean, I think, you know. I'll go ahead, Wood. Yeah, so I guess, no, I, I guess, I guess. Not, the, not, oh, that's why I'm not discouraging people from doing it. Like, I'm not saying, like, yeah. definitely don't do it. I'm just saying that I, I met more challenges doing podcasting than I did doing YouTube. YouTube. But that's but that's you know anecdotal. I could be wrong. Um, <clears throat> go with your strength. If you feel passionate about it, ultimately, if you feel that's what God you know is, is compelling you to do, or, or however you want to construe that theologically, then you know go for it. You know what I'm saying? There are some advantages uh, of why to do it. You know, for example, I mean, I know it's an odd advantage, but. Uh, the copyright issues aren't as con- you know constraining. You can kind of play audio and even to a certain extent sometimes music. Now, depending on the platform, if you upload it to YouTube or in your podcast, and those issues come into play. But uh, you may be in a context where maybe a person has no access to any kind of video stuff and they only have audio stuff. A podcast is a solution for that. And so there are reasons to want to try to do it. Maybe a person... Uh, wants to be a little more, uh, I don't want to say secret of identity, but you know, you can do YouTube videos, but it's sort of like, hey, where's this person at? Whereas a podcast, it's not as as big of a deal if no one ever sees your face, although people might like it and stuff like that. Or perhaps, you know, the person is super ugly. They're just really ugly. Podcasting is for you as well. You know what I mean? So there's there's some <laughs> definite ways I would recommend to do it. Yo, um, or I mean, sometimes I mean, t- I'm saying this, and like, as as I'm looking at cutting the podcast, I'm, I'm getting more emails of people like, "Oh man, I love the podcast." So it's like, you know, there there are, there's a market out there, yeah. but no. you know, ultimately you've got to look at your skill set. You got to look at your um your your market, and I don't even like using the, using the term market. I mean, it's just like the group of people that you believe will benefit most from your ministry. You know what I'm saying? And, you know and just kind of take a look at that and, and go from there. Yeah. You know what I think is the the bad. I mean, here's I think from a podcast listener, I can't subscribe to too many podcasts. I'm subscribed to a few, but the problem is when the episodes are so long, like they're like an hour long or something like that. You who has the time to listen to like a three hour podcast all the time, unless you have a job or something that caters to that. You know what I mean? Or you work out or something like that, and you have the time to listen to it. Then that's the problem with podcasts is you can't um, ingest so much of it like you can YouTube. I think, and the younger generations are are way quicker with their attention span. You know what I mean? So I think that's just how it kind of goes. So I'm just listening to one podcast right now, basically. You know what I mean? Even though I do like some other podcasts, but I just don't have the time to listen to them. So, You know, another thing, too, and actually this this will, I think, deal with, like, podcasts and, um, like, say, lives, for, like, YouTube lives, is not, like, now I'm, I'm going to kind of use a hip-hop reference. This, this may, you know, fail or not. I don't know. But, like, you got, like, different types of rappers. You know what I'm saying? You got some rappers who are great writers. You know what I'm saying? They can just just write for days. You know what I'm saying? Very lyrically skilled. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. And you have other rappers who are who maybe don't write as well, but they are, they are off the top of their head. They can go freestyle with anybody. I mean, they can go for minutes on end. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just different skill sets. And I think the same thing applies when it comes to, like, podcasts and doing lives. If you're the kind of person where you have to, like, script out your, your podcast, like, word for word, then that's a lot of preparation time. You know what I'm saying? At least at least it was for me. You know what I'm saying? Versus somebody if you can just give if somebody can just give you a topic and you can just talk about it, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and just go for like thirty minutes without really having to rely on notes, then you know, podcasting you might be all right because you can just you're not gonna have as much prep time. So you kinda have to think about that as well. That when you choose your outlet, you know, in terms of how you want to get content out, 
you know, what kind of person are you? How do you generate content? And what, you know, what, what platform is going to be most conducive to you being able to be consistent? Um, all right, guys, we, uh, we want to get off here in a couple minutes. Uh, so let's do some questions, but we'll do them quickly. Uh, this one's for vocab. Valid core asks a question to vocab on adding music and audio effects. Do you run everything through a mixer then to your PC or just have a sampler on the side? So I did not used to have it's not well it's not a mixer it's a it's a soundboard you know people might call it a mixing board and so that's helped with audio my homie DJ Nex helped me actually set part of that up and then the other thing I have is I pay for the the more um, you know this is kind of the cost of, of doing this kind of ministry I pay for a live streaming software and on it it allows you to integrate certain aspects of sound where i can play audio i can play video relatively easy as long as it's set up as well as sound effects you know basically where i can just hit a button through the e through through the the live streaming software itself as long as i have the sound effects set up i can play that because sometimes i play sound effects on my show like i'll make a transition i'll do the air horn you know or uh, different things like that and i can do that all live so it's like live kind of production on the spot and sometimes there's misfires but basically, uh, your live streaming software, you can set up all that stuff in advance. Now, it's good if you get a soundboard because you can basically move a lot of your sound work off of your PC because your PC becomes really bogged down when you're live streaming and all this stuff is happening at once or your laptop or whatever it is, your Mac, whatever it is. And so uh, I do recommend doing that eventually. But really, you can do it with a, with a good uh, live streaming thing and have it all set up kind of in your computer to start out. And so that's how I have sound effects and stuff like that and, and audio effects. The reason I can do audio effects, even though I'm not using my live streaming software now, is because my mic is connected through a soundboard. And so that's why I can be like, like this, suckers. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow, that's super cool. Uh, Follow-up question, <laughs> follow question from Jenny. Why is that guy wearing sunglasses? <laughs> <laughs> You want to know why, Jenny? Right there. Yeah, the, reason, the reason is, Jenny, is because I am... <laughs> Fire! <laughs> oh, my goodness. What, He's crazy. What a dork. Vocab, Vocab's going through a phase right now where he thinks, okay, uh, if my content isn't good enough, I just have to spice everything up <laughs> with sound effects yeah. and visual effects. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That's, that's exactly Spire. It. Everybody loves Spire. <laughs> uh, it's like, it's like actors and actresses are like their career is pretty much done, so they go to a new team or something like that. It's kind of like you know, get that uh, shock factor going. Uh, your, your, uh, 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 your Highness said hi, David. Hey, bro. Who shot the video for your testimony? Uh, that was my friend Josh. Um, he works in Times Square, but he's also one of the guys who recorded uh, uh, Islamicize Me uh, for us. We had, we had three camera guys um, for Islamicize Me. They weren't all there at the same time, but um, we had, yeah, we had three. Well, on, I think, two days they were. But uh, other than that, we kind of overlapped them because they had different schedules. But, uh, yeah, he's a, he's, a, yeah, he's a camera guy who recorded that. Uh, and uh, Pedro Jr. says, who is going to play Joseph Smith in the Boom Boom Room? That would be me. Yeah, okay. right. That'd be me. Don't lie. Can't have Mark. <laughs> oh, we should. Be, that's what we should do. We should have John be Joseph Smith. I'll be all confused about it, asking <laughs> questions from the sources about black folks and the Joseph from the, from the, oh, the no. LDS oh. sources. Or I could be blind. No. Remember, like the that Dave Chappelle skit back in the day. Remember where he is blind and he is racist. Klansman yeah, guy. Muhammad is <laughs> blind. Joseph Smith. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, all right, guys, we uh, we can sort of for this last minute. Everyone want to pick a comment they can address real quick. But John Buckley said, "David, I know you love classic rock. What's your favorite song uh, by my favorite band, Aerosmith? Please don't say Walk This Way. Uh, overplayed." Uh, no, obviously, if you're talking Aerosmith, it would be Sweet Emotion. Um, anyone who says otherwise doesn't know what they're talking about. All right, guys. Um, let's see. You see anything? 
You see anything or no, something? No, I'm about the instant evolution. I don't know if y'all want to tackle that or not. That'd be it. A... Oh, yeah. Let's talk about it in one minute. Yeah, okay. I know. <laughs> That's what I was laughing. I was like, not as, because that won't backfire. <laughs> no, not. Yeah, yeah. Start a fight not in this and... short of a time. I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind addressing it on the uh, on the show and having some people on uh, to discuss that. But, um, I know yeah. Vocab's a big fan of it. I know that for sure. I know. Oh, I'm a big fan of theistic evolution. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you did the video on my, or when I had the little cameo when you came on my video, people were like, um, people were like, Oh, uh, I got a couple of comments from people like, is uh, Vocab a Christian? I asked because I saw his Darwin hat. Uh, so people thought you were a, that's pretty Oh, funny. they didn't understand that was a, uh, you know, that was like a. In the Dillahunty Dawes video, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, just being like, yeah, they thought, uh, yeah. was just, It's like yeah. an atheist cameo. But I was like, how did they know your name then if they're asking if you're a Christian, right? How would they know Vocab then? Because then, they, if you had no vocab, they should know you're a Christian. So it was just weird. Anyways, it's funny. I've got to apparently have an image problem here. I've got to rectify. <laughs> this will be my next video. Yes, vocab mm -hmm. is a Christian, and I'll do it while I'm wearing my Darwin hat. Uh, just kidding, <laughs> everyone. I am. Video. It'll be a, a replay from like five years ago. Yeah, I'll just remix it. I am not an uh, theistic evolutionist, and I know we have some friends who are, but uh, we have our dis. Well, I have my disagreements with them on that. So. Uh, Anyways, mm -hmm. that's all I'm going to say about that right now. Vocab also believes the Earth is flat, by the way. You might want to come out. <laughs> I did a few videos on, on that, talking to some flat earthers. <laughs> Not for an advocacy position, just to clarify. <laughs> yeah, sure. Don't try to backtrack now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah, fellas. Yeah. You guys ready to wrap up? All right, What's guys. What's next? Let's What's go and wrap up. on all of our channels? What's uh, Are you doing some more flu tank? Flutane clans, uh, David, or you got some other video? Like, what's popping? What's going on next? Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to start posting my resurrection series. I was going to start posting on uh, April 1st, but I got sidetracked by all the stupid messages I was getting from certain people on uh, coronavirus stuff. So I ended up doing mm. multiple videos dealing with the coronavirus stuff, but we are getting close to uh, resurrection weekend. So I'm going to start posting those tomorrow. And so that's Wednesday. And then Thursday, I have to check my calendar, but I believe Thursday, I'm going to be on here with Zachariah Boutros live. And uh, so nice. he also has a $60 million hit out on his head. So should be interesting. Wow. So what we need to do is take care of that little problem. <laughs> Collect the money. There's, there's my solution. And that's how we fund our YouTube channels as well as all of the ministries, and that'll be guys. If there's ever a sixty million dollar head out on my head, go ahead and take me out. Uh, <laughs> take me done, out. Bro. Fund all. You know right now. Fund You're all done, your ministries bro. forever. <laughs> yeah. It's a wrap. It's, it's, it's okay. One of those situations. He's more valuable dead than alive. <laughs> It's for the gospel, man. We're doing it for the gospel. <laughs> for the gospel. We could probably yeah. convince Sam Shamoon to actually do it. <laughs> crazy, no. oh. <laughs> then again anthony rogers is an, an ex-con maybe he's down no maybe see down. see the problem with with someone like sam or anthony is like I, I could i could have it in my mind okay this person's gonna come kill me i'm just gonna have to let him but like instinct kicks in you know what i mean so they're gonna come they're gonna do it and all of a sudden instinct is gonna kick kick in it's gonna be eye gouge open hand chop to the adam's apple and they're going down they're gonna be like darn you know, it's not going to work. So, yeah, I don't even know because I don't think any of these dudes could take me out even if I was trying to let them. Oh, <laughs> Watch out because uh, Sam's got the wrestling moves he learned in wrestling college. Bruce Lee, yeah, yeah. The Syrian Bruce Lee there. So, uh, what you brother? <laughs> yeah. What we got coming. So, uh, tomorrow or the next day, I'll release a video on the prosperity preachers in quarantine. Um, that I did with my wife. So yeah, that will be out tomorrow or the following day, depending on. I gotta do my try to pace a little bit, so we'll see. But yeah, probably out tomorrow. I'll probably do a video over here this week. All right, I'm excited to see that stuff, John. Yeah, so I got some stuff uh, a couple uh, live that I'm gonna do about Hebrew originalism. Gonna uh, kind of bring an argument back, but actually before then, um, either tomorrow or Thursday, still gotta figure out which day it's gonna be. I'm supposed to be on Braxton Hunter's channel on Trinity uh, Braxton Hunter and my man. Jonathan Pritchett, man, uh, I've been kicking it with Jonathan Pritchett. You know, we've been you know dialoguing back and forth, and I had Braxton Hunter on my channel last week, and he invited me to come on his channel this week. So um, probably um, tomorrow or Thursday, I'll be on with um, Jonathan Pritchett and, and Braxton Hunter, Trinity Radio, man. Yep. 
All right, guys. So uh, y'all know what's uh, what's going on. And uh, again, the links to Adam's channel, John's channel, Vocab's channel are in the description box. And so you have an idea of what these guys are going to be uh, covering here. And so again, twenty third. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I was not sure. Twenty third. That's when I start. That's when we start Islamicize me on youtubecom slash And there's going to be all premieres, so you'll be able to talk to people in the live chat while it's happening. And then after that, every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, so uh, you definitely so you want to uh, subscribe to Vocab's channel for that, and even if you watched uh, Islamicize me a couple years ago, it's good to uh, good to uh, check it out, check it out again. And he has the actual special edition. So, all right, everyone, catch you all tomorrow with some videos and Thursday again live. That's right. Peace. Good night. Happy birthday. And happy yes. birthday, happy birthday once again to me. <laughs> catch you <all> later. <laughs>